give you thanks that you've given us this day to live. I'm uh, thankful for the opportunity to live in a free country and to make decisions. Father, we pray for your guidance as we make decisions tonight, Father, that it might be the benefit of the people of Hartford. We pray, Father, that you, everything that we say and do will always honor you. We ask these things in your name. Amen. 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 Uh, we have a rather lengthy meeting agenda tonight. Uh, several visitors have asked to address the council, so uh, I'm going to ask that those who address the council kindly limit your presentation to about five minutes if possible so that we can uh, move right along. Uh, the first one visitor we have is uh, Ashley Christensen, who's representing uh, the group supporting Marcy's Law for Kentucky. So, Ashley, if you want to come on up and address the council. Thank you all so much for allowing me to come and speak to you, and I will be very brief and not take up much of your time. I just wanted to come, first of all, say thank you to Mayor Chen, Mayor Chen for, uh, for formally endorsing Marcy's Law. We thank you so much for your support. Um, Marcy's Law is a constitutional amendment that will be on the ballot across Kentucky this November. Um, it took a two-step process to get this on the ballot. The very first step was to get it passed through the legislature. Uh, we did that this past January, um, and that took a lot of work. As you can imagine, having something passed in a very bipartisan way is a rarity these days, um, and we're very proud to say that that was done, and we were the very first bill um, that was passed out of this, this legislative session. So a very, um, something we're very proud of. So what it is, is it's a constitutional amendment, as I said, but it's a victim's bill of rights. So we have some laws here in Kentucky that protect crime victims, but they're, they're statutes, they're not constitutional rights. Whereas the offender has a multitude of constitutional protections. Across this room, we could, we could immediately recall um, so many protections that offenders have. Um, we see them on crime shows all the time, but I bet not one of us could think of a protection provided to a victim. And there's a reason for that. We just It's just not something that is prominent, as it should be. And that's what Marcy Saul will do. It will elevate those rights into the Constitution here in Kentucky. It will make them more prominent and more enforceable. Some of those rights, they're very common sense to make sure that victims get notification of court dates, um, notification if an offender is moved or is released from custody, um, uh, the right to be present, this is a big one, the right to be present during trial. That is something right now the, the victim is pushed out of the courtroom, whereas the offender is able to be in the courtroom. So that's a big change that will happen under Marcy's Law. Um, and the others are just very common, you know, very common sense rights. Um, the right to restitution. Um, so a lot of these things are currently in place, but the, the difference that will, the main difference is it'll be constitutional, and the victim will have the right the, the right to in, to enforce these rights under Marcy's law. Do you guys have any questions? I know that's a lot of information. To just curious, in. would it set up a protection for the victim, like what just happened in Las Vegas, where the, the what was it Mandalay Bay just sued all the families and the victims of that? I mean, would that type of protection be included in that? Well, so a suit could still take place. Yeah, um, but they sued the victims. Right, and I mean, and the victims could still potentially be sued. You're right, I followed that case and it's terrible. It's horrible that the victims are actually being sued. The difference would be is that under Marcy's law, um, they would, the victims would have orders of protection that aren't available now. Now the court could interpret that in a bunch of different ways. Um, so we would leave it up to the courts here in Kentucky to, to interpret that. And if something like that came up here, I don't know how they would interpret that. I'd be curious to see. Any other questions? Could, could you explain? Oh, go ahead. Could you explain the article? Do you know anything about that came out about the? Which, uh, which article is it? Came out I'm in sorry. the paper the other day about you all, about some kind of yes, suit. Yes, there is a lawsuit. There is a lawsuit pending right now. Um, the Kentucky Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers mm -hmm. has sued to prevent Marcy's law from being on the ballot. And why is that? Um, they well, they're defense lawyers, and they don't right. want victims to have rights. Um, Predetermined if they're guilty or not. Right. That's the way that they see this. Um, <coughs> I, I would beg to differ. I don't think that giving by giving one group of folks rights, it necessarily takes away from the rights of those who are accused and convicted. Because the rights we're talking about mm -hmm. is notice of court dates. Um, that doesn't take away from the rights of the accused. Um, making sure that somebody uh, is paid restitution after the defendant is found guilty doesn't take away from the rights of the accused. Uh, they're already convicted at that point. 
So those, you know, I think, I think they're they're doing their job. They're they're advocating on behalf of their clients, and that's fine. If they're taking it through the process as they need to. I think we'll be successful with this lawsuit. So we polled in Kentucky, and we poll at over 80% um, approval on this ballot measure. So I think we will be successful, um, and I would ask for your support. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Um, next, we have Edwin Sheffield, if you want to address the council now. Yes, uh, I'm here to ask uh, what the status of the Coast for Kids project is. We had told some of the participants last spring when we did the yard sales, we'd be doing some more in August. I'm wondering if the council intends to do that. I'm just wondering what your, your plans are for that. For, for what now? The Coats for Kids. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, anything that you know would benefit that we'd be glad to participate in so uh, you know our plans are to go ahead and support it you know, whatever it takes so where is all the stuff that we had for the coast for you I would yard sales I would presume it's upstairs in that is it upstairs in the attic? There, there are, there's a lot of this up there upstairs in our storage is where most of it is so it's available at any time. Okay. Am I um, wrong? Excuse me one second. Am I wrong that the Harvest Festival was also endorsing that same program? Yeah. I am wrong or I'm, I'm wrong? No, you're wrong. Okay. Well, now, at one of your meetings on tape, it, it, was, it was brought up that the Harvest Festival uh, would be supporting the Memorial Garden Fund. Not that I'm aware. No. Not that yeah. I'm aware of. Unless well, we can listen to the tape. I mean, we've okay. gone through that this week already once. There's tape, and it's not it's not intended to support the memorial gardens. Okay, well, I mean, if so, that was must have been a misspoke. Somebody said that. Okay, I'll just get the tape and take care of it later on. Okay. All right. Uh, next, I have Keith Puckett from the fire department. So Keith has some slides for us. Yeah, I got some. I'll try to limit my 20 minute presentation to five. Uh, I guess the reason that, that we're here is we kind of heard some comments from the last uh, city council meeting. Kind of run the fire department down a little bit, some little jabs and, and different things. Um, and I, it's something I've heard for a, a year or two now. Um, kind of held, held our peace. The city and the fire department have always got along real good up until recently. And I, and I don't think it's really to the point of disrespect, but the little one-line jabs needs to, needs to stop tonight. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about who we are. For And really, I guess Jerry and George are the only ones that, that I've dealt with uh, back several years ago when I was chief. Uh, and I'm not chief now. Um, my job won't allow it. But uh, I am going to be your liaison here for the next several months. So you're going to see me at all meetings until we get these issues worked out. Main thing is, if you want to know more about the fire department, we're down there all the time. You know, we had a, a you know, Mayor uh, Hendricks, when she was mayor, she'd make fire runs with us until we had a large structure fire and she got caught out there with us about five hours and that was about our last run. But uh, you're more than welcome to come down anytime and learn about the fire department. I'm going to try to run through this real quick about Harvard Fire Department, who we are and why we do it. Um, being a firefighter is not just, hey, I'm a fireman, I can put red lights on my vehicle and move away fire runs. Um, there's a lot of training, and I've heard some comments about other city departments. Whether you're a volunteer firefighter or a paid firefighter, you gotta go through the same training. To be a certified firefighter takes 150 hours, there's also a 400 hour certification and it just goes on from there. So these guys down here at your fire department are not getting paid to, well after the last city council meeting we had a training on Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock to start to recertify everybody in CPR. And after everybody heard those comments from the last city council meeting I was kind of concerned who was going to show up. So they don't deserve to be talked about. That room was full. Almost 20 some firefighters showed up on Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock to learn CPR. That shows you what kind of people that you've got down there trying to protect your city. This is a driver's training course that the state puts on where we can actually get into a trailer and it's all 3D and, and 
screens and steering wheel just like you're driving an actual fire truck. You can pick a ladder truck, bumper, command vehicle, whatnot. Uh, just some slides here showing some trainings that we have to go through. I'm sorry, take the off. This is the Firefighter Survival Rescue Course that all firefighters have to go through. It's not an option. You have to, uh, to learn how to self-rescue. It's a very strenuous course. Uh, chance of injuries, you have to learn how to bail out a window head first, death, slide down a ladder, different things. Um, and all firefighters are required to do that. Now, this is some extrication training that the uh, and we have trainings once, twice, three times a month, depending on the weather, different things. Uh, this is some extrication training. And I'm going to show you a slide here in a minute of a couple of car wrecks that we work. That, you know, as a, you know, I'm putting it, this is my 30th year. October will be my 30th year down our fire department. We've got a group of guys now that I'm extremely proud of. We've got some that's only been on for a year that are hands down better than some of the paid firefighters that I've worked with. I've been on a paid fire department too. This is the bus fire over here at the garage a couple years ago. Uh, 3.30 in the afternoon, 4.30, something like that, Scott? 3.30. 3.30. Uh, that guy standing right here, that's actually Scott Ford. He's in attendance with us tonight too. Uh, they just left school. They made the, called the first truck out. And we're on scene in about four minutes from Paige. And I'm sure the school board was quite happy with our fire department that day from saving all those buses from burning. Uh, and talking to Tom Woods, I can assure you of that. The reason I show you this car fire, this was about, I don't know, a month ago, 2 o'clock in the morning, that, uh, that your volunteer firefighters during the week were out here on the parkway fighting a car fire at 2 o'clock in the morning after be at work the next morning. I appreciate everybody's attention if you could. This is a ladder truck uh, that we purchased uh, a couple years ago. Uh, this is a structure fire down in Centertown. I'm, I'm a little fast the can, George. Uh, this is a 912 pitch roof. Um, if you can see that hole right over here where the two roofs meet, I apologize. Where the two roofs meet, it's very hard to get up and ventilate by off of a off of a straight ladder. And it's quite dangerous to the guys. Uh, if you can see this ladder coming out of this window, the, uh, can you imagine operating off of that, trying to swing an axe or a chainsaw to cut a hole, versus sitting in that ladder truck in the bucket, operating out of that bucket. So quite a lot safer. The only reason I bring that up, I've had a discussion about a ladder truck, and we've been assured that that, that discussion is now over. Uh, you know, a ladder truck is something we've needed for a long time. You know, people say, well, you don't have any, you know, big, tall buildings. Well, a lot of truck's not always for a big, tall building. Uh, as you can see on this, this is just a, a one-story house with a very steep roof. And being able to get up on top of those steep roofs to get that smoke and heat out helps the injuries from the firefighters on the inside. Uh, gets the heat out, gets the smoke out where they can see and operate. So, you know, a, a lot of truck's not always for a... Uh, tall building. Um, this is a structure fire out on Lake Forsberg Lane. Um, when this picture was taken, we just made entry into that room that it was on fire, and uh, the guys start getting little missiles shot at them. Little one-pound propane tanks that they use for camping. Uh, one of the guys had a one fly by his head, didn't quite know what it was until it hit the wall right here, and he looked down and seen what it was, and then they all started going. Just because we're volunteer firemen doesn't mean that it's that it's quite an easy job. There's always a risk of being hurt, injured. Um, Shane Ball, um, our other firefighter in attendance, he'd been on about four or five months when Bell's funeral home burned. We were packing some stuff out, trying to save some property of Larry's, and tripped down the, the stairs uh, due to some hose lines that were going in. He messed up his knee, and he's going to have to deal with that for the rest of his life. I'm getting the signal to hurry. Uh, this is a structure fire out on uh, 231 North where that gentleman <coughs> ran into the building. Uh, it was a fatality wreck. This was right after our arrival. Extrication out on uh, Barnes Creek Road. 
Uh, about the time of our arrival, we learned this was a domestic incident. We were already committed on scene. Um, Post been guns involved. We went ahead and you know, had to do what we had to do, pull the roof off the car, uh, rescue the lady out of the inside. Uh, we'll skip that one. This was a wreck. Sorry about that. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, out on 1414, uh, dump truck and a car. As you can see, the, uh, the side of the car was quite damaged. A uh, lady up front had injuries. A small child in the back seat. The reason I'm showing you these pictures is just to show you what your fire department does. And if you don't have Facebook, if you don't follow us on Facebook, sometimes we'll post pictures. Uh, we're up to about 180 runs this year, 370 last year. And that's down from 600 the year before when we were making all EMS runs in our fire response area. Uh, we uh, had cut that back due to you know, cost and, and you know, it's wear and tear on the guys. Um, I know I need to hurry. I'll it. The main thing is, council, uh, the things that happened at last meeting, the little, the little one-line comments. I made it about halfway through the recording. I got pretty upset, and I had to put this. Uh, if you have a question for us, George and Lisa and Marissa all know how to get a hold of us. Please, I'm asking you. The guys don't deserve to be talked down to at all. And if it happens again, uh, you know, I'm asking you for it not to happen again. Um, anyway, if y'all have, any, have any questions for me? I just got a suggestion, Keith, because I'm the least seasoned on the committee. I think when the new council comes in, it would be nice to have an orientation where the new council members have to go or do some yeah, kind I don't, of I don't like this time. rotation uh, and, you know, where they come down to the fire department. They go, you know what, I think that would be very educational for, way, you know, for everybody. That was that was discussed at the last meeting. I would be more than happy to explain sure. everything that we do. Yeah, I think that would be great. Okay. Thank you all okay. very much. Thank you, well, <clears throat> Go ahead. I want to say something, because obviously <laughs> I'm probably the person that, that stirred a little bit of this up. And, uh, and, I, and I don't want to, well, and I don't want to, I'm, you know, I've talked to Shane. I mean, I'm, I'm willing to man up and, and I'm not going to hide behind anything. Uh, when I, when I was asked to run for the council and decided to run and got elected, they asked me what was my first priority. And I said, my first and only priority as a citizen was to get Hartford's financial business in order. That's my whole agenda. Right. Not to support any political, I, I could care less about any of that. Right. So when we get a financial s statement out, <coughs> right. all I'm doing is I'm looking at numbers. Right. And I'm, you know, if we promise, I don't think we've ever denied anything no. to the fire department, and I hope we never do. My whole, my whole comments, and I've talked to Shane about this and tried to explain myself, is just because we promised a lighter truck seven months ago and then it gets bought today, I'm sorry, I forget things. Okay, yeah. So I'm looking and I'm thinking, okay, yeah. why did we spend this? Right. Why, why are we buying this? And that's, that's the only questions I want to know. Right. Now the comment, my poor judgment of words, was using the blow money. Okay. Well, let's get that all straightened out. I'm not accusing you guys of blowing any money. Right. My whole my whole purpose behind that was if we say, all right, here's seventy-five thousand right. dollars and you spend fifty thousand of it, don't think that, hey, you got twenty-five thousand. If we don't need to buy anything right. and everything's working fine, let's save it for a rainy <laughs> day. Because we might need it. You know, yeah. the city might need it. Yeah. I don't want you all to think that hey, I better hurry up and buy something because if I don't use it, I'm not going to have it. Right. And I use the bad phrase of blowing the money. Right. Well, I apologize. I didn't mean for it to be like that. I'm just wanting you to be frugal with the money that you have because are. we and all know Hartford's <laughs> not. So, you know, if I've offended you guys, I apologize. I think you guys do a great work, especially yeah, when you... We got a call you know, very so soon after that meeting from you, and we appreciate it. I that. thought, you know... Uh, I'm, like I told Shane, I'm not going to hide behind If somebody wants to talk to me, I, I've got no agenda here, trust me, whatsoever. I'm just we trying just to serve our community. And, and yeah. you know, I appreciate what you guys do. I pray that you guys go home safe every night to your families because, you know, you, you and the police department, 
yeah, are the yeah, ones that put your life on the line every day. Come and do it. So, like I said, if I my poor judgment of words, I apologize yeah. to you guys. Well, and since you're the liaison, I hope you will spread that we, to the word. Definitely will. And if so my dog like start, if my dogs start bark, that that the <laughs> night after that, my dog started barking. I thought, oh man, my house is burning down, and the fire department's not coming. <laughs> Well, you know what? Now. No, you can sit here about <laughs> mountains. And yeah, I'm just saying this, and we'd still come. Well, we'd come. But like That's I said, the kind of people we are. I didn't. Like that I, said, I just want to explain myself. That thousand versus seventy-five. That was all provided to the mayor in the very beginning, and I know it's been a while since we've ordered the truck. Ford had a big shut down and all that. So it's well, like I said, while. it's just not yeah, you. I mean, I look through. I look through everything, and, yeah. and <laughs> you know, I just. Oh, we all have wants and needs. So we want. A new ladder truck. Yeah. We need some new rescue tools. Those extrications, we're doing with 30 year old tools. Right. We need some new tools. We know that we don't have the money. We're not going to come down here and ask you for that right now. The truck was a need. Yeah. We're driving a brush truck out of our station yeah. two that you go down the road like, you know. Yeah. So it's it's a need. But this is the con. And I told George the other day on the phone, I said, I hope tonight turns into a discussion rather than an argument. Mm-hmm. I was fully prepared either way. Well, like I said, I'm I very just, passionate about the fire department. I think you can tell that. And I, you know, I put in 30 years down there. So, if you're not, you shouldn't be in the job. But you, if you're not exactly. passionate, you shouldn't exactly. be. Doing it. But like I said, I just I, want I to like explain myself. I'll I didn't be here wanna, at every meeting. If y'all think of something for yeah. next meeting, be prepared and ask. It. You know, I think it's a fair statement to say that when we go look at the water plant, when we go look at some other departments in our house in our uh, city, that uh, it's easy to walk in and see what needs to be done or not needs to be done. Right. Sometimes the fire department's got a bad rap because it's a volunteer. Uh, you work to bring, you all work to bring in money outside of the city from taxes or from the state funds or from the county funds. And I think the only other department in the, in the city that does that is y'all get some money from possibly not much, but from drug arrest or something like that on any contraband. Not anymore. You might, not anymore, but you used to, right? Right. Yeah, we build it up pretty good. It's going to deplete. We're buying safety vests or bulletproof vests for all the officers that are left. Um, but since we took that sixth position, we're not able to do that no more. So that money will go because uh, we can only do that when my narcotics guy, Brent Lindsay, uh-huh. he was the second guy out on a night shift. So we have one guy out that can, you know, take calls and answer all, the night, all that stuff. And he could work on that with the sheriff's department. But when he's the only one out, he has to take the call. He has to be a, he has to be a regular officer, right? He is a That's what I meant, though. He's, he's getting ready to be a lieutenant. But in, in those situations, your two areas, your two departments, the only one that had the capability of bringing money in that wasn't right. taxpayer dollars. Yep. I would think that it would be very meritorious for the city of Hartford if some of us could actually sit and learn a little bit more about the fire department, learn a little bit more what could be done right. along that line. That was for back help when us. I was chief, like when we bought the fire station, there was a plan. Mm-hmm. Here's where the money's coming from. Uh, when we bought the, the fire truck, here's the plan. You know, we come to you with a plan, and it's it was teamwork. It wasn't, yes, you can do this, no, you can do this, because the authority. Well, I think I think that's a fine line of how much authority, you know. And I think there's a, there's an also a problem difference between we understand this side, but we don't understand that side, right. and vice versa. Right. And even but even with some of the stuff you're talking about, it's it's hard for us to make a decision, or it's un, excuse me, it's it can be unfair. For either one of us to make a decision or pass judgment when we don't have all the information. Correct. No, just like you know, who, I don't know who made the comment about the motor at the last meeting. Let's take the fire department. An eight thousand dollar motor would be twenty eight thousand. You know, if you ain't got nothing good to say, don't say it. I don't know who said it. I don't want to know who said it. You know, I can't tell from the recording, and I'm gonna drop it. And everything from that, I'm gonna drop it tonight. Let's move on as a team. Well, I do have one. I do have one other question because I, I on the big ladder truck, I, I have been a little critical. I was all in favor of buying it at first. Mm-hmm. Thought it was going to help our ISO rating and stuff, and it mm-hmm. didn't. I don't think it really helped. We did drop a little time. bit. Yeah. <coughs> so we, due to our water department, nine one one, there's a lot of other factors. Uh huh. It did help, and we were told maybe not as much as we government. would like for it to, right? Pardon? Maybe not as much as we would like for it to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's other factors besides just that. Yes, we were told we'd have to have a ladder truck. We need a ladder. Was truck. that ladder truck a little bit overkill for? Not really. Houses on Union Street that are so far set back, mm-hmm. um, our 75 foot single axle, we can't reach it. Mm-hmm. We, it, it served no purpose. It's just a pumper with a ladder on top of it. Okay. The extra 25 foot really makes a big deal. Okay. Um, and the deal that we got. It was a, it, the price was 
phenomenal. I won't phenomenal. deny that. I yeah. mean, I it was a little bit of expense outfitting some things and getting and some, some seals some and some maintenance yeah. on it. It is. But, uh, the community center, the character outside the community center, yeah. you ain't going to touch them with a regular truck. Yeah. 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 So, you know, we've used it at Beaver Dam several times. We used it at Fred's. We had a lightning strike, an air conditioner on top of Fred's. came very handy. Uh, we've used it at Big Rivers. So the community around, and I know the county gave us some money. Mm -hmm. I hear talk about that, but um, yes, it, it's been very needed, and we've needed it for a long time. And, you know, we're very thankful to have it. It's not something that rolls out on every fire, and I don't need to. No, it could be, that could be overkill, could yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we're smart about it. Yeah. You know, if it's an apartment, we used it over at the apartment building in Beaver Dam. Gosh, what a handy thing that was. Mm -hmm. Because, one, it's, it keeps firefighters from getting hurt. Fire's got to be put out, one way or the other. Either we have to go in and do it, or in that case, we could get up above it and work in the roof and get the fire put out. So. One point you brought up, and I think it's important for us, I think if we can sit down and both learn... Well, on our side and on yeah, your side, the same way with yours. That I has think that in the last couple of years. Why? Who knows? We can. Uh, it used to be really <coughs> outstanding, and we can get there. Mm -hmm. No hard feelings. We're good. Sounds good. Thank yes. you all very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the other, the last uh, speaker we have is Mike Nance. Oh, Mike. Uh, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the council. I'm Mike Nance. I live over across town on Thomas Street, uh, the old family homestead. We have a problem, and it's spread out throughout the whole end of town over there in the number of blocks, groundhogs. Uh, in fact, uh, the gentleman that lived behind Jerry back there, he has lost his garage. It caved in. <laughs> from the ground on. I'm going to lose a building back there. Uh, just in the past 18 months, we have captured and or killed 38 groundhogs at my residence. We are infested. And everybody says, where'd they come from? They're all over the, they're all over that in the town up there. Um, for those of I'm going to go speaking back from age, uh, the Bill Fuquay residence on the corner down there. They had a homestead that was there and they left when it was taken down, they left a concrete foundation there. And if you walk down there and look around it, it looks like a bunch of bulldozers have been burrowing through that area because of the groundhogs. Now just recently over the last uh, week, uh, sitting there in the driveway and happened to watch that out there in the field in front of me. Wayne Evans, I called and let him know that his uh, garage or storage building he had back there, that there were six about behind his uh, building, and he's got a metal structure, and that's going to be damaging to the, for burning underneath the concrete floor foundation. It's not going to be long enough to start breaking up. I called Wayne, made him alert, aware of it, and I'm sure that he is probably taking steps. Now, we refer to, you know, if, if my insurance company is looking at this thing, I've got a bunch of thousands of dollars worth of damage to the home. They have eaten every single piece of my uh, ventilation system on the house. It's gone. We just recently got out of there trying to figure out why do I not have my air conditioning working right. They have torn it every bit out. They have eaten it. They got in. We thought we had, last fall, we thought we had them beat out and that they weren't coming back when then this spring when they uh, began to start moving around when the weather warmed up again and the uh, season started, they began to come out and we have to capture more. So what I'm asking for from the council is to help. Now this is not a rodent, as we might think, like a rat or something like that. Groundhogs are considered mammals. Raccoons, possums, skunks. This infestation needs to be looked at. Uh, the Wilma Wilson property just down the street from me, she's got a dozen back behind her house there and just over the hill at a, at a brush pile. The, I don't know how often these things uh, produce new ones. 
but we have got a lot, way more than anybody can imagine. And for me to have the damage that I've got, I mean, like I said, I'm going to lose this building. I know it. Hey, it's just a matter of time. But I'm not going to try to replace it until I've got this under control. What I'm asking for the council is help me. Put your heads together. Have you contacted anybody, any agency like uh, Animal, Animal Control, Control. or? I have not life. talked to Animal no. Control based on my experience from some of the Animal Control for the things that they do not. You know, they're talking about, we'll bring you a live trap. Okay. I've got live traps. Yeah. You know, we've already, we have been so creative in trying to capture these things that I'm not sure that some of the people that that do it for a living wouldn't be glad to hear from us of how we've managed to round some of them out of their holes in order to get them into the live trap to get them caught. But uh, there is, there's no poisons that I'm aware of that uh, work on it. And uh, we've, I have used every remedy that they have uh, come up with as far as uh, uh, watermelons and anything. If they, we thought that they might want to eat on, we've had it in the trap <coughs> and to try to catch them. And we, like I say, we've been rather successful to get 38. And uh, I hope nobody else around there uh, has that problem. Jerry, you want in? You know? No? Yeah. Okay, well, I'd be glad to pass a few on to somebody, anybody. <laughs> I just go ahead and keep them. I don't need them. <laughs> I usually take them out into a uh, rural area in the county that uh, uh, where there's thickets and vegetation and stuff you know, for them to eat on and turn them back loose into the wild. Uh, you, our farmers obviously do not want them because they are really a problem to those that are uh, producing beans and uh, other vegetation and stuff for their uh, there needs. Any, are there any rules that we know of about dealing with groundhogs? I just Googled uh, about the groundhog infestation. Nashville's got, Murfreesboro and Nashville's having all kinds of problems. There's a company called Wildlife, Southern Wildlife, that goes out and does it. And ironically, what it says is, please do not put out stuff like watermelon fruit vines. I'm sorry. But, <laughs> but try to capture people uh, or to capture the uh, groundhog. Uh, don't fill in the holes because what you're going to do is if they can't get out there, they're going to burrow somewhere else. But obviously, if there's big, if there's um, debris around, like brush piles, one thing that comes to mind. My concern is, is that I wonder if the sewer system out there is has it been scoped, and could it be contributing to some problems as far as attracting groundhogs? You know, I, don't, I, I do not know. I can. I know Miss Coy down there. Where she and I have talked, and she talks about how many that she sees. And uh, I know that she just recently told me, she said, I've been stuffing stuff in the holes. And, you don't want to do, that's what yeah, they're saying, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Do that. I, I would prefer to know where they're at right now than to try to figure out where they're coming out and moving to later. So, I mean, can, I mean my I'm wide open to the council. I hope the council will take some kind of a measurement to try to help us. Because if we're all going to have this problem up there. We're all going to have damages to our home. For me to have as much damage as I have in the uh, ventilation system, the air conditioning system, and the heating system under my house, I like to die it over when we figured this out. I knew it wasn't working well. Well, boy, it's not going to work well because there's nothing left there for it to work. Appreciate it. Thanks uh, again. Yes, sir. A few years ago, it's probably been uh, six or eight years, I live on Oakwood Drive in 708, and there was one in our shrubs at, at our house but it was sick i don't know if it had rabies or what was wrong with it i called the animal patrol and they came down and got it but there's two empty houses across the street from me and i see one behind it just every little bit you got one you got ten. yes but well, maybe it's a different one every time i see it <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? what i can tell you from my you seem to know a lot about this. This, is i have over not over. seen the little ones Hey, I've got thir I had 38. So where all where the little ones at? Because you know darn well if I haven't seen them, I haven't caught them. They're growing from somewhere, and I don't know whether they're not coming out of their burrows or what until they get to a certain age and uh, weight. But uh, so what did you do about them? Seems <laughs> good. I like it. You need to talk to me. <laughs> I would be honored to hear back from 
somebody uh, yeah, made me uh, suggest anything. <laughs> and this gentleman here, I would love to know why that uh, they said not to not to give them the watermelon. Did they, did it it say said it? do not put out foods or fruits to try to because that will actually bring more in. I mean, it said, it said do not do not put. To fill the holes up, mm -hmm. and of course they're they're, they're wanting to try to sell it. They're talking about all that. I mean, my suggestion first is let us try to call animal control and see if they've got any idea. And if they, you know, they may be used to dealing with one or two. If you caught thirty-eight, it's kind of like roaches. It's not the ones you see that you worry about. It's like thousands and thousands more that you don't see. Well, we're in that area. Really, they want to catch fish and wildlife. Fish and wildlife. Miss Fisher said you want, we might check the That's fish and right. wildlife. That's right. I can't remember his name. There's a guy at Center Town. We had some skunked under our building down there at uh, Lycan Spring. And they had uh, one skunk. He had five babies. And we saw them. And he came up there and uh, caught all of them in a trap, like traps. Well, see, while I was policing for the state, they told us, I'll say, parks, any nuisance animal such as these to. Rid them. Well, their idea of ridding these things was to go ahead and take your gun and shoot them. Well, if you can imagine at 2 o'clock in the morning with a skunk standing out there and you fire off your handgun, it sounds like an atomic bomb or bazooka just went off. So we begin to kind of divert from policy and use a smaller weapon gun that we would bring in there. In one year, I killed 22 skunks and then turned around the next year and killed 18, but before I could get into my last year while I was there and kill them, the uh, tourists began to come in. And in a matter of a very few weeks, I saw five skunks with a minimum of five babies with them. And I'm going, hey, they just outclassed me for the last, what I've been able to accomplish the last two years. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, these things my, uh, migrate fast. And, for reproduce fast. Thank you all. Thanks, Mike. All right. Uh, next thing we have on the agenda is the uh, adoption of our minutes from the July 26 meeting. Everybody have a copy of it. I don't think they do. I don't think they do. No. No. We got the 21st. We got the 21st, but not July 26. So this I did. Did we not? Uh, I did. I July 26th. Yeah. July 26th. Yeah. It's not you. Real short. I know. I don't have one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, while she's doing that, uh, let's go ahead and tackle the special call minutes for the special call meeting on the 21st. Everybody has a copy of that. Give me a second to look at those over. Accept the meeting minutes from the August 21st meeting. Second to it. Uh, any discussion? Any corrections, deletions, anything? If not in all favor, accept the minutes. Up to good hand. Thank you. Motion carried. All right.
Mr. Mayor, I understand that uh, on this one, Mr. Orsworthy was appointed on code enforcement for one year, but she stepped down. Yeah, I haven't filled it yet. Um, the other two are still serving? That's who we have. Entertain a motion about the minutes. So moved. Okay. Second. Second. Any discussion or corrections or deletions? All in favor of accepting these minutes as presented. Thank you. Motion carried. All right. Uh, Tara's not here. We have our financial reports. You have those before you. questions regarding that. and the chemical analysis compared, compared to the period last year? Mm. Is it because of agreed orders or what is it? Or does it just happen to be the way things are hitting? Uh, chemical versus order is an as need basis. So we just happen to need them before? Right. Okay. And then also remember that your budgeted amount is annualized. Right. I realize that. City of Hartford Ordinance 2018-06, an ordinance of the City of Hartford, Kentucky, setting water and sewer rates for all water and sewer customers inside and outside the Hartford City limits. Whereas the City of Hartford City Council evaluated the City Waters Plant Distribution Accounts and Budget and determined the current rates as charged by the City were insufficient to maintain operations. Whereas the City Council is also aware the current bills reflect two separate sewer charges that are confusing to customers and whereas the City Council desires to increase rates 
to help sustain water plant operations and change how sewer rates are calculated and reflected on water bills. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the city of Hartford as follows. And yes, it kicked out. Um, how much do you need me to read on this? Okay. There is a correction. I want to note that there is a correction where it says, and whereas in the ordinance of 18 05, the city passed an ordinance substantially the same as this ordinance regarding water and sewer rates, but it was discovered an error requiring this amended ordinance. Okay. Everybody's you want, aware. You want, you want the, it, said, it said the rate was per gallon. It's per hundred. It's per thousand gallons. Yeah. That was a typo. Okay, we had to go through it all over again for because it's a different ordinance. All right. Any discussion regarding the ordinance? Make the motion that we enact this ordinance. All right. Is there a second to it? Second. Second okay. All right. Any more discussion to this motion? I'd like to know: uh, Are we doing anything, and what the cost would be to check to see how the groundwater is getting into the system? That's costing us money, and what can we do about it? Well, we've been doing that for many years here. Uh, they do smoke testing, which helps to find downspouts, uh, drains, things like that that are hooked to the sewer system. Yeah. You know? But as far as finding it out here in the countryside, you know, away from the house, uh, and only smoke will only come up if there's a fissure in the ground. You know, where it's in. Right. That's the way of being released. Of course, that would be where the water would come in. So far as yet, smoke testing, we haven't discovered any of that. We know that there, there is an eye getting into the system. Uh, it's quite a bit. Well, you know, we did a, a big sewer project uh, a few years ago in two stages to replace a lot of lines. And that helped, and they got to the point where the engineers have told us that uh, any more work that we would do to try to tighten up the system would be more costly than uh, what we would realize from saving from the I. Well, beyond that, our problems with our our system is not I and I. We have this. There's our percentages of I and I are no higher than other communities that are similar sizes. So I and I really is not the problem, although that has kind of been what has been focused on so much when it comes to our system, so. But we have sewer lines that are in the bottom of ditches that, you know, we know that they're probably letting sewer, uh, ditch water get into the sewer lines, things like that. So we try to replace it as we become aware of it. Yeah, I just wonder if there was anything, and I'm sure you've been working on it. But. There's been some discussion about trying to put a meter at our final lift station. Right now, our sewage is metered at the plant. Well, if there's a leak between our lift station and the plant, we're paying for we it. We pay for it, yeah. So we're talking about putting a meter, we're weighing the option of putting a meter at the last lift station so that anything beyond that would be their their problem. I think that's a good idea. Well, we're, I don't know what kind we're of investigating like that. You know, we're so can we ask into, questions? Okay. Are, are we allowed to ask a question? Sure. Okay. So can you tell me then if we've got this waste going into the water or whatever, what is that money we're paying to this wastewater management system going for? That we have to pay all this money for, apparently it's not helping us. And that's that's my question. Well, I, there's two different subjects here. I mean, the what we're paying wastewater 
what we're paying on our bill for sewer, that's wastewater. That's to pay the regional wastewater to treat our sewer that we send down to them. The downside about it is, and it's part of the contention we've had for a long time, is what they're putting on accelerated depreciation. They're warehousing more money down there. They're charging us more money than what we thought was reasonable and fair. Uh, regional wastewater doesn't do anything to help us rehab our own sewer lines. Am I wrong on that? So in other words, the lines belong to us. They don't belong to the regional wastewater. They, they own the sewer plant. The lines belong to the city of Hartford. Aren't they a non-profit? Well, I'm a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we laugh. Millions of dollars. They're, they're, they're sending on a whole lot more money than anybody around here else is. And, if you, and their argument has always been is that more sewage is being sent down there from Hartford, Beaver Dam, Center Town, and Industrial Foundation than what the plant probably was originally designed to do. And at some point in time, they're going to have to put on another another uh, unit to help accommodate that. So they've had accelerated depreciation. Uh, what money they're saying? <laughs> they're sitting on some significant dollars down there. Aren't they like at seven million dollars? Uh, you know what? Yeah, um, that, that doesn't show in their office. That does not show in their office. We have to get the brain. So here's so here's an example. In April, there was 30 days. They said it rained 0.9 inches, not even an inch. 0.9 inches of rainfall. And we were charged fifty-two thousand three hundred and three dollars. In June, there was still thirty days. There was six point eight inches of rain, and we were charged forty-seven thousand dollars. We hired an independent. So we were charged I more the for point nine inches of rain than we were for six point seven inches of rain. Does Beaver Dam pay the same rate? Same rate. Their, their same rates are the yeah. same. Of course, they're a lot, little larger community. So they have more. They have. They don't have unusually more than. The, the, from what I can tell, no. But but here's here's what we we hired an independent engineer to come in and evaluate. We wanted somebody that wasn't our regular engineers. We wanted somebody that had nothing to do with City of Hartford, something nothing to do with the regional wastewater. We brought them in to evaluate what's going on. We've gone through two phases of sewer rehab. We spent a lot of money, grant money, a lot of money, tightening up our sewer systems. At the end of the day, it doesn't seem like it's any better than it was. And uh, you know, we've looked at potentially trying to figure out some way to open. We can't really open. A lagoon again, per se. Kind of wish we'd never got rid of our lagoons, you know, years ago. Uh, we thought about creating holding tanks and to try to where we could send stuff down there. There is no correlation to our to our sewer bills and how much rain. You on the bottom of these reports, we have what does it go back uh, two years? And it shows every month, every rainfall in the doctor. There's no correlation. So you know. Unfortunately, the only thing that we feel like at this stage of the game, based upon our recommendation with the uh, engineer, is not put in lagoons because of the price that we would have to pay to do that in the number of years would be a lost cause. Not really spending any more money trying to rehab our sewer lines other than normal wear and tear and replacing. It's trying to figure out some way to work out with regional wastewater a more reasonable rate. That hasn't been the easiest thing in the world to do. So Beaver Dam, Center Town, and all the places they y'all haven't come together and they come on all together. We've we've, tri we've tried conversations with that. Yes, Beaver Dam doesn't have that much. They still have a heart for Beaver Dam rivalry. Yeah, there's. You have, you have six representatives on the wastewater board. That's the truth. I know. Two but it's so dumb. Beaver Dam. I can assure you, as one of our representatives, we make a motion it's voted down. I was on it for two years and I tried to do center town. There was a, we had a little over $2 million in excess then. And I did get it out of, uh, we did at least send it out to get more interest in where it was getting. But uh, what their argument is, is that it's going to, that equipment's going to fail. That's why they're doing the accelerated depreciation. And that's why they're doing the accelerated depreciation. That's their argument. And My equipment's going to fail too, but I'm not making a lot of money on this. <laughs> <laughs> I have to fire out every day. <laughs> you know, the, the, you're right. What, where, where we're at is what Ms. Fisher just said. We've got to figure out a way, and we've got her and uh, Mr. Ross, it's hard heart for representatives. And, but what we've got to do is figure out a way that, I hate to say this, but there's one or two individuals that hold that pretty tight. And, uh, until we figure out a way that those rates can get reduced. 
That's what we're living with. I mean, Can when we you sail look at water, huh? Can we sail we water? Tried, we've talked to Be we've talked to Beaverdam about that. We've talked to Beaverdam about selling water. We were selling the water to Centertown at one time. Of course, we no longer have that contract. Uh, there's been a variety of things we've looked at. Water, water is another issue. Our water plant, our water tower up here was designed to produce and make more water than we're currently using. So, you know, Mr. Chen was just talking about uh, one of the uh, engineers' suggestion was is reduce, reducing that water tower up there, not making it as large. We don't need to make as much water. We are dumping some water on the ground. So we're losing some water. With, we're losing money with the water plant because we've got to keep the water turned over so it doesn't lose its chlorination. So we've got a, we've got a two-edged sword there. The water hurts us because we're making too much, and then the regional wastewater is charging us so much to treat it. Uh, you know, I think we would all just faint fall over. The cost of operating the lagoon was nothing. So we're paying negligible. We're paying a sewer bill on our water that's busted out from the ditch too long. Our plane. Well, no, that's not meter. Correct. Wouldn't it be coming through? How, how much water are y'all cleaning a month? Uh, do we have versus your seven? Set in now. How much water are we cleaning a month versus our seven? Uh, it, it varies because uh, sometimes when it's around testing time, we do a lot more flushing than we do on a normal basis. Uh, to try to keep the quality of water up in our supposedly our day to day lines, we've got some employees back here that. We, we flush approximately, what, 300,000 a month, just to, uh, just to try to keep the water fresher in these dead-end lines. We flush those. Um, but there's some times that we may flush uh, 100, 140,000 gallons, you know, in a, just a few days' time, right before our testing, to get our true value of what we're putting out at the plant, you know, to send off for testing. Yeah. I, I understand that part. What I'm concerned about is that the leaks are not getting fixed. Well, for Mr. Likens, there is another way without smoking. They can now run cameras in there. Uh, you catch a big rain. Say, uh, spring of the year is a good time to do it. You do it once twice a year. Uh, I know the plant has got cameras they can run up in there. They can tell where the groundwater comes in at. You might look at that a couple times a year to see something needs to be fixed because there's a lot of groundwater in the okay. Also, with the, yeah. the smoke testing, it, it will show up if we have a leak, if it's coming up in the yard, we can smoke test that and we can see that it's that the smoke is coming up in the yard. So we know we have a problem area. And what we were spending so much money with contract services doing camera, we actually bought a camera. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. rather than pay hard to do it, it made more sense for us to buy our own. Uh, back to a point that Travis made a little bit, and I'm just being quite honest, it's my understanding at times that the Beaver Dam Commission would like to see something done different with regional wastewater. I'm not always convinced that that message is being delivered to their representatives, or if it is being delivered, they're not acting upon Beaver Dam's wishes. You sit there, do you, do, am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. I mean... I might direct you to do a thing a certain way, but you're going to do whatever you want to do it anyway. Which, don't get me wrong, if they're representing the community, I want them to have their own ability to make decisions, but they're also representing the constituents of Beaverdam. So I, I don't understand. I'm not going to use the word politics. I have no idea, but there's something going on under that a lot of us just don't understand. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you for the discussion. Is there any more that before we consider voting on this ordinance? Okay, it's been, motion's been made and seconded. All in favor of passing this ordinance, up with your hand, please. Okay, all opposed? Okay, thank you. <coughs> all right, uh, next time of business that we have. Sure. Sure. Uh, next item is uh, Veolia. And it's just more informational, doesn't require any action right now. They've been in town uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. They've looked at our plant, they've looked at our tank, they've looked at our lift stations, they've looked at everything that could possibly be 
involved in water production or distribution. Um, they've already made some general su suggestions, but they've gone, uh, they've left and they're preparing a report for us. Uh, when it's going to be ready, they didn't give me any indication. But the uh, they were they were quite pleased with what they saw, but they did see potential for improvement. Um, some of our employees had a chance to talk with them, and I think that relieved some of their anxiety and that got some of their questions answered. Uh, I told uh, their director, their district coordinator, I told him that before we would even consider their uh, proposition uh, that they should meet with every one of our employees as a group and give our employees chances to ask questions, uh, not only, uh, you know, but about everything that pertains to them, not only about uh, their involvement in work, but uh, retirement, um, job security, different things like that. So uh, they they fully agreed, said that would be a great idea, and so uh, that's where we're going to be. As soon as they get their proposal prepared, they'll come back, bring it, and we'll have that meeting and see uh, how the employees feel about them, and uh, we'll hear once again their presentation before the council and get a chance to make a decision about what's best for Hartford. Having questions about the old yeah. Did you have a chance to talk to any of the mayors or any of the? I talked to the Harnsburg mayor. I visited with him. I mean, did did he ever a couple of release hours. any comparison of what it was before and then after when they came? Uh, different daylight and dark. Before Harnsburg was in a desperate situation. Uh, their their water plant was having more problems than ours was. They were getting water out of Rough River Reservoir having to hire divers to go in and clean up the op their opening where they were getting the water. It was just, they were having a terrible situation. Uh, Veolia came in and, and did everything in their city except for the police and fire. Uh, and so uh, that was about 16 years ago. And uh, they built a new water plant, uh, state of the art, Osmosis plant, the only one in Kentucky that the municipality operates, uh, cost them seven million dollars. But it's um, it's a fascinating operation to see. Um, but Have they had any hiccups or I don't know they, hic no. disagreements or whatever with them as far as no, rates? Or it's anything? like everything else. When they first started, there was a lot of apprehension, a lot of questions to be answered, but. Uh, the mayor said once things kind of got settled out, he said it's been the best thing that ever happened to Harnsburg because they're they're able to uh, manage all the system for a fee and uh, Harnsburg hasn't had any problems paying their fee or anything. So so does Harnsburg, you said they still have a mayor, would they need the council to hire a private management company the, to run well, and what do we need? There's, uh, they still have a council. Uh, what their purpose is, you know, I didn't ask him uh, what what they were still responsible for doing. But uh, like any other contracts, they would have to vote on it. You know, but if it didn't involve Viola, Viola doesn't have the the uh, ability to enter into a contract. Uh, like to put in a new water tank. I don't, they don't have that capability. They, they can't in, in debt the city of Harnsburg. Harnsburg has to accept that indebtedness. So that would be one reason that they would still have to have a council. But as far as managing the day-to-day -day operation, uh, council doesn't do that anyway. The mayor is a part-time mayor. You know, he has a life insurance or an insurance agency right next to the building. So all the employees of Harmonsburg would be employees of this management company. Except so for the mayor wouldn't really, he wouldn't. Well, 
operate the day-to-day -day operation because it works no. for the you know that cuts out that part of the mayor's responsibilities is the is the management of the oh, so employees. He comes like a, a manager for that company. Part. He he comes like a manager or supervisor of their employees. Veolia manages the employees. Okay, they're all employees of Veolia. Okay, it's like uh, we would if we hired a cleaning company to come in and clean our building. We would still be have control over the building, but the employees would be the cleaning company's problem. Right, so the, you know. the mayor of Hardenburg don't have a whole lot to do. Well, <laughs> it's like having a city manager under the mayor. They don't right. have a they don't have as much responsibility. Yeah. I mean, the mayor's a part time job anyway. Right. It's not something they're supposed to have to do is manage all the employees and stuff. But There's, the law requires them to have a mayor. Yeah, well, any, any contract, government. for example, any contract the city enters into has to be signed by the mayor. Okay, so I mean, that's just one aspect of his responsibility he still has. Uh, but as far as managing the employees or anything like that, you know, uh, mayor, that yes. I'm from Hardenburg and we audit that city. I could, I could add a little bit to it. Thank the you. Olia, the Olia basically is the main that's all they do. They do uh, garbage collection, water, and sewer on a contract basis. They do have all the former employees who work in those departments, but the mayor and council, they still set property tax rates, they collect property taxes, they enter into all the contracts. And you saw the police department, they're all they're all employed in the city. So it could be a clerk, assistant clerk. All those people are still part of the city of Hartsville. All the OIA does is the maintenance of Water sewer and the garbage collection on a contractual basis. Usually, the council and the mayor doesn't have to do all the, the personnel stuff anyway. <coughs> Does Hardenburg have more infrastructure, more money coming in than what I've got in our Well, their water system provides water for all of, of Brett County. Yeah, but the, the town itself probably brings in more money than what Harper does. But well, from what I know of Hardenburg, I'd say they make a lot more money than what Hartford does. There's more businesses in Hardenburg than yes. there is Hartford. So they don't have like a regional wastewater. They don't have a county wide water system. I mean, Hardenburg is, is a county water system. Yeah. And they have their own sewer system. They're not part of Hartford. Yeah. Kind of regional. So there's, there's your answer there. They don't have a regional They're not part of the regional water system. Their, their sewer costs is what it costs. Do they still have lagoons? No. They have a, their own water, their yeah, wastewater yeah. treatment plant. The Viola manages that. Yes. So much of what they pay Viola contract is based on a certain percentage of their uh, contract payment. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you so much for having me. All right. So much of their contract is like 63 percent of it is paid out of their water revenue. Uh, 13 percent of it may be paid out of their garbage collection. The different things like that make up their contract payment to Veolia. It's basically we would collect, use that money to pay Veolia's contract. What would the price of a wastewater treatment plant to sustain something properly? What would it We've cost? talked about that a lot. <laughs> yeah, we've got plans for one. Uh, actually, the cost to pay for that and maintain it would not be much different from what we're paying regional right now. Because what we're doing now, we will never ever own it and it'll always be on our side. That's correct. It'll well, always be a leak sucking on What kind of contract did you have? I have no idea. I'd have to go back and look. Yeah, he wants to know what type of contract that was. How long? Um, I'm not sure what it says. Do you know how long the term is on perpetual? perpetual. For regional? Perpetual. perpetual. Does that mean like indefinite? Yes. So, so you can never get out. Who signed that contract? You can't do it. That's what I, that's how I thought it was. I remember it. This, is a, this, is the, this is the elephant. That is the elephant in the room. Okay, let's just yes. be honest. It is the elephant in the room. Yes, it is. And 
And again, we spent good money trying to determine what other alternatives was, and, and the mayor's correct. The, the engineer come back and said, we could put in that, that holding basin, we could go in and build our own wastewater, but by the time we paid the debt service on that, we wouldn't be saving anything over what we're currently doing. The only thing that, let's just be honest, the only thing that I know of that we can successfully do is try to work out collectively a working relationship with the people sitting around that table down to waste water. Well, there's got to be a loophole somewhere because, I mean, it's like a marriage. Well, if you have a bad marriage, you can get out of it. So you I don't know, bad things with it. <laughs> 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 well, then also, I just don't see why you can't get out of it. Hard to develop the management plan, which would save them some money in such areas. Just present it to them and the board life. Centertown doesn't, the representatives from Centertown, they don't have, correct me if I'm wrong, it's not as, that's what I'm looking for. The situation is not as caustic to them because they don't have as many customers. Beaver Dam is, may have some issues, but they're a little, a little more flush with cash than the rest of us are. And Hartford is the one that's struggling the most. And again, I think it goes back to the subject. I'm not sure, as I understand the, com the conversation I have with the Beaver Dam commissioners, they'd like to see do something done too. But it's the people sitting around that table that's causing the problem. That's exactly right. It's not a bad system if we could just get the cost down where right. it should be. Yeah. That's not, you know. Um, any more discussion regarding Veolia? All right, to move on to the next one, employee handbook. Uh, I presume everybody's had a chance to look at it, to make suggestions. We need now to sit down as a group and go through it and finalize what we want to submit to KLC uh, as the final, uh, our final suggestion for what it should be look like. Uh, so I'm looking for an opportunity for us to get together and spend a few hours, maybe several, but <laughs> a few hours to sit down and go through it. Uh, I have compiled a list of suggestions that have been given to me, so it shouldn't take very long, but uh, there are some sections we can leave out, some that we need to add. I'm only yeah, suggesting I have a question on this okay. employee handbook. Since it's an employee handbook, is there any input from the employees or is it just you all? Well, right now it's just us, but. Um, well, we we'll talked be, about that. Um, we'd be so glad to make. None of the employees have no. You could put out a handbook that's totally different than what no. we've had. We're updating basically laws to start with. I mean, that's the main thing is that ours was really outdated. Yours was really outdated. Um, and so a lot of uh, things have changed when it comes to human resources. So that needed to be updated. Um, very few other things so far have changed, but we're talking about it. And I think it would be a great idea to involve, especially managers and things like that. So. You know, we've got copies, have a copy available any time for you to go through it, take it, make suggestions, you know, that's fine. Yeah, I think it would be nice to have, it's like, you know, with all the stuff that's going on, we got, I think the only ward, the only council member here that's running other than Jerry this next time. And I don't even know you, I don't know you. Uh, a while back, it was suggested uh, we used to come, we always would send a representative from every department, that's the way it used to be. That got canceled for some reason. I noticed in that popular meeting that was on the radio that y'all were, you didn't know a whole lot about like police stuff. There was a lot of things that if you had somebody there, we could have straightened all that out. But I'm going to come to every one, okay, while I'm still here. I don't know what the future of the Hartford Police Department is. You know we've lost one. Y'all got rid of one position. And we got two younger ones now that are, you know, I told, I had a long talk with the mayor yesterday. Uh, but it's like, 
over the last four years or so, this city, I've been here all the time, I'm sure I've been here a while, I was hoping a lot more of the employees would come, but it, it was like, a, like I told George, it seems like the, the mayor position and the council members, it's been a constant attack on the employees. Everybody's morale is messed up. Y'all want to change everything. Y'all sit in here and talk about everything, but you don't ask any, anybody anything. Y'all do it all. And I think maybe y'all not realizing the ripple effect when y'all change this, change that, we're going to get rid of this, we're going to get rid of that. Well, and I'd like to address knows, that myself. We have no idea. And I'll tell you why I'd like to address it, because I came onto this council with a background in human resources, and the first thing that I started looking at was the fact that our employee handbook was from 2009, okay? Secondly, I started hearing things, and this is no secret among anyone, that we had uh, people who were getting paid administrative leave, had nothing to do with any of us, this is just happening, paid administrative leave whenever they were doing nothing, we had employees... Okay, we don't have to give names, but I'm just telling you why things are being done the way they're right. being done. So we started looking at, okay, what do we need to do? First of all, that was affecting morale, right? Because nobody yeah. wants to work while somebody else is... is okay, so that is affecting morale. Um, we're talking about reduction in our budgets and things like that. Um, and so we start looking at it as a whole, okay? What can we do better? Not personal to you, you, any department, the fire department, which they don't get paid anyway, it's not a personal attack on anyone. Right. It, is when, a, when it is a look at it as a... In the town, right? Should no, it's not just that. Should you that give it to the business owners, or should you at least pay your employees first and keep enough employees to get the job done? Okay, it's, it's not, it doesn't even work that way. That's not even what I'm talking about because we're not, we don't have the power to give our businesses any money except well, for the EDC and right, they don't, right. I mean, and I can't, I can't say about anything about that. The town and all this when there's some times we don't even know if we're going to get paid. So why bother about putting, yeah. When have you missed a paycheck? Have you not gotten a paycheck? Uh, no, we've when gotten have a you paycheck missed every time. But no. we've had to, and you know from the past, that George told me yesterday, sometimes general funds is 77 bucks. That's right. And but you've why got should we be worried so much more about beautification of downtown Hartford to bring industry in when we can't afford to pay our own employees? Well, I mean, I can't answer that. All I'm telling you is the reason why I was addressing personnel is because, not because I want to attack people personally, and that's on me, because I'm the one who came in here and said, okay, if these are the things that are happening, without making it personal, without coming over there and saying, you, I want, I was the one who was suggesting, okay, we need to look at every position that we have, how we can restructure it, and what we need to do with it. And then we started looking at those positions, not people. We weren't looking right. at people. I don't understand that. We probably, it's time to, for a lot of things to be updated. And, and that's what we were doing, and that's why we have this handbook here, sitting here, because we, we, re we recognize that, you know, we let personnel go in this city. And I'm saying we, not that I was on the council or most of the people here had anything to do with that. I'm just saying we because this is the city and this is what we're dealing with. So that was my approach. Um, yes, I'm definitely willing to sit like anybody else here and listen to anything that anybody has to say. Is it a personal attack on anybody? No way. No way. Because I'm a citizen of this city too. I don't make much money right. either. And, and a lot of people in the city that work for the city, they're still here. You know, years back we used to have people who want to come to the Christmas dinners and this, that, and the other. But it just seems like it's went down and we need to figure out how to bring that back. I agree with you. I don't understand why tonight was the first night that I walked through the door and we have all these seats full. I don't know why that is. Well, and I'm hoping that it stays like this every month. I hope so too. He has a legitimate concern because I sit on this council and signed two loans, signed for two loans so they could be paid when there was money sitting in other accounts that, wouldn't, that no one would allow us to touch. We sat here as council members one night and wrote checks for our property taxes early and gave them to the clerk so that she could deposit them and we'd have the extra money that we needed to do payroll the next month. And we, if we hadn't had that tax money, 
that we paid our taxes early, there wouldn't have been enough money there to do payroll. But yet there's an account that's sitting out there that has more money than it needs. To and just I deal with those things. I think part of what is missing here is that we've had that discussion because Edwina is correct. That has been what has gone on. Um, but we have money in other accounts, and it makes more sense whenever we're low in one account to borrow from ourselves in different accounts than to go borrow from the bank and pay an interest rate. So that's what we've done. Could you that's borrow from plan. yourself and pay yourself back interest? Yeah, but why would we pay ourselves back interest? We just don't charge it. We just don't charge it. Well, yeah, but we don't want to pay that other account. We just loan it and pay it back. Yeah, we don't want to pay another account. If we borrow the money from EDC to pay the employees, we don't want to pay EDC more money than what we took out. We've never borrowed any money from EDC. Why? I'm not saying we have. I'm saying if we did, we don't want to do that. I'm just saying for say, first was going to such and such bank and then pay a closing cost and pay interest. Could you not just borrow it from this other account and say that you're trying to benefit yourself? And until I get it paid for, I'm going to We're going to pay ourselves <laughs> more money than we borrow. I mean, it, this was what I'm saying is the money would be ours anyway. How much interest are you? I know with me running a business, I'm going to pay more interest going to a bank, borrowing it from someplace, versus me buying it for a mortgage on a house, my personal property. So what kind of interest are you paying to go borrow it from a bank? What you're missing is that the money is already in these accounts. So right, if we not borrow them from the bank, no. This yeah. was the so I mean, what are we going to do? Move money from one account? We, we, we borrow money. Account. We borrow money from other accounts and charge no interest. So we're not paying okay, that. We're not I paying that. I, 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 I thought you were saying you were going to go borrow. I think we did. We did. They, we they borrowed. We did in the past. We borrowed in money the in the past to make payroll when there was a huge amount of money sitting in an account that is. Not yeah, we don't. Well, I, was okay, I, was just, I was just thinking, you know, just that's one thing. There are, there are, there are there are getting grants for out, mm -hmm. spruce up outside the property. That's not. That's not what the no. The, 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 there is no. There is no grant to spruce outside of the property. It's a building stabilization uh, uh, grants. Is what's available, but they're not grants to spruce up the outside. That would be to. I it was like two thousand dollars to the outside. Two thousand. No, it's up to four thousand dollars potentially. It would be that if you were to, uh, uh, for example, if you had to replace windows or something on the front of the building, or also if you need to put a new HVAC or electrical, if the building needs to be rewired. There's a potential for up to up to four thousand dollars, but it's 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 not it's not it's not a it's not a beautification. Should we be given those grants? If but they have to invest. That is that is correct. People that are so close to retirement, should we be doing that? I get your argument. What I what I would like to, and I'm not a part of the EDC nothing to do with that but what I'm saying what I am saying from the outside looking in is you want your community to grow right you want economic development or else we won't have jobs you won't have anybody to serve I mean there won't be anybody here you're already having a hard time in this city attracting business you're having a hard time attracting citizens so I, whether or not there the amount of money whatever that was there in the past and you know not being used and then borrow money I don't know and that's not part of my thought process at all. Do I think you need economic development? Absolutely. I think you need economic development. Do I think our employees in the city deserve to be paid fair wages and to be treated fairly and have fair expectations? Absolutely. I think all of those things are true. There has to be I'm found a happy confused. medium. I have a question. Is painting a building, is that structural? It's enhancing the facade. If Mr. Ford just said that these grades were all structural. No, he said they are for structural. They're also for the facade. When and that that's all. Windows, paint, if that's what it takes. Is that a grant available for all businesses or just downtown? No, it's anywhere from Rough River to Muddy Creek, one block off, and it excludes nonprofit organizations. But you have to match. But you have to match. It's uh, you have to, and you have to match. I mean, you know, you have to. We, you can be glad, glad to apply to give you an application to look at. I've asked for an application to to see as a council member, 
and I was not given one. Is there an application? There is an application. Okay. I think they're here. They're here. Okay. And there is an EDC account. There is no. There is an economic development account, not an economic development council account. There is, a, there is an economic development account. That is correct. Are, that is correct. And if I were to ask for an open records request to see the financials for that account, there is not an economic development committee cash account nor financials because it is a committee. You ask for the committee financial statements. They do not have any. No, economic I'm, development has a cash account, has financial statements, is a full-fledged department. I only answer questions that are asked. Okay, all, I haven't asked for anything. I don't know what you're talking about, Lisa. I'm just talking I about haven't you. asked for anything. I, I mean, simply ask. I simply ask. If I were to ask for the financial records for the, for the economic development, are there records that I would receive? Are they closed records? Economic development. Account. Account. Everything is open to us. Then you can get that. She yes. was just asking for I'm just asking. Is, she was Bye. asking if she could have financial statement or cash accounts for a committee and they don't have No, it I'm, I didn't say a committee. I said okay. if I ask for the financial accounts for the economic development account. Just like your prior requests that you have made in open records, they will be fulfilled just like No, I didn't get anything out of my last request. I didn't get anything. It was sent back to you. I'm sorry if you didn't receive it. It's Dr. I received a text message that says it could not be sent. Okay. First not from you. The, the, you it, First it of all, not you, go through the text. you sent me a text message from your phone to my email account. That's how I saw it, and I would not have known unless I knew your cell phone number that was from you, and I texted back and asked in the future if you would please, here's your information, if you would please in the future fill out an open records request like everyone else. And I told you I would. And I never heard anything from you. I have, and, I, and I didn't ask for that again because it's a big point. What I'm asking now is, it, is it possible for me to request for the records for the economic development account and me receive them. Any citizen can open ask okay. for any of those funds. Did you have to put your request in right? I, think, I understand that. Okay. I think we've gotten off hand yeah, from the employee let me go handbook, back to, so let's move on. Let's go back to this. I'd like for us to think about a time that we can sit down for three or four hours and uh, talk about the changes that you've suggested, the additions. Whenever we do that, can we go ahead and take his suggestion and invite uh, the managers or city employees to sit down with us? But they need to, you all need to, they would need to read it, you know. And I can, I can provide them. one of them a cop my copy for a little while or whatever needs to be done so that they can look over it. I've got that copy in the car. If somebody wants to take it and you guys can pass it around to the managers, y'all can look at it, make suggestions. When we decide to meet, come and sit down with us and we can go over it together and I, I think that that's great because I think the more transparent it is and the more we work together on it the more calm everybody is about it and the less fear less fear that people have about it yeah okay uh, next thing we have is uh, Memorial Gardens um, Scott Brown in Litchfield is the one that uh, we had talked about putting up the uh, post and the gates and uh, the sign. Um, his father had a massive heart attack about the time that I was contacting him. And they since have discovered he's got a tumor on his brain and he's actually, Scott said he's just a matter of a few days. But I talked to him the other day um, he had started work back on it again, so we should have, you know, we passed a motion to, to you know, spend money for that, and so uh, he is working on it, but uh, it's, it's been delayed by his family problems. Um, I do have a bill that we need to talk about, you know, whenever we um, ask them to pave the road. Uh, 
uh, they quoted a price. And then when he was doing the paving, when he got back to the end of the road, he enlarged the place, he paved a little bit more for a turnaround back there. And he's increased his bill by sitting by four hundred dollars. So now the bill is seventy nine hundred dollars instead of seventy five hundred dollars. Did you ask him to do that? Um, I mentioned I didn't mention to him, you know, that there was a wider place back there to turn around. I did not tell him to go ahead and do the turnaround. It makes it much easier back there to uh, turn around. Uh, than driving out on the grass and possibly getting on graves and things like that. So I'm, I mean, it's up to you whether you want to do that or hold him to the 7,500. It doesn't make any difference to me. He did contract it, but he did end up doing more than what we had asked him to do. Uh, you just know, inquired about it. You didn't ask him or tell him to do it, right? Right, I did. I think we have to honor the contract, okay. not necessarily the price. That's fine. That'll work. I'll just tell him we'll stick with the contract, 7500 and... Uh, I mean, that's just my opinion. I, that's my thought. Other discussion? Yeah, I'm zipped. <laughs> <laughs> that's shocking, isn't it? <laughs> It will be a problem. Everything it will work out. It will be a problem. But that is nice back there. That turnaround spot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the general consensus is just leave it at the seventy-five hundred that we pay. I don't know. That's fine. I mean, that's why. What do you guys do? Don't be looking at this. <laughs> no, I'm table. looking down there. <laughs> It'll work out either way. Four hundred dollars. Trust me. I wouldn't rock a boat for four hundred dollars. It ain't worth fighting. Uh, that's no problem. It'll work out both ways. Trust me. It'll just get you back the next time you pay something. It'll work out. It'll work <laughs> that's out. What I'm thinking. Way. I don't know about. I don't know. It'll work out. Is it in the best interest for it to have been done? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Have, have you all have you been back there? Have you, I drove up to it the night I went up to it. He still had a string across it. Yeah, I don't know how you could have if he hadn't done that extra part. I don't know how you could have turned around without going into the cemetery. It was a gravel area. In other words, you'd had to get off the blacktop on the gravel area, and then okay. you saw I haven't got to drive back in it. But the thing it. is, is you don't know where that gravel area is because of the grass that's grown had grown up in it. I mean, we spent my, my <laughs> question. It, to me, it's worth the extra four hundred dollars. Then let's. Then, me too. I, I then, agree. Then, then move forward. With it. Just pay it. Let's do it. I make a motion that we pay the additional four hundred. Okay. Second. Second. All right. All in favor. Thank you. I had a question since the top of my talk. Pardon. Uh, I've had a couple water leaks. It's, it's been a couple years though, and. The only reason why I worry about it is because I have to pay for the black top to go through the center. I care less what happens on the back side. But through the center, if there's water leak or something after it's done, and it can it can wait a year, oh, I don't mind. You know, make sure everything settles and things. But I would appreciate it in the part that I'm paying for that it would be black top again, where the, the leak was, where it was dug up. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, because I, I have three places there, then it's where it, one was a speed bump, and where it, we'd had something, but then whenever it come through with the snow, it ripped it all out. I got a big spot there, but I'm, I'm not complaining about that. But I have one down here on the riverside that where it has been dug out, and there's a now it started out as a four foot hole, but now it's about eight foot, and where that should have been graveled over the years, then just the, but because it's been over two years process. Okay. But if y'all ever have any extra, I'm not wanting you to make all sorts no. of tricks. If you have extra sometimes, what he's in. been, what Mr. House has been doing is trying to uh, patch the places that have been dug up when we put in all of our water lines. Okay, there are still some places that don't have anything to do with that that we're trying to. Wow, I've never put mine on the list. 
Okay. Just, since, since it was brought up, I'm just wanting to bring it in front of you. I've never ever brought it in front of you. Right. Or nothing. I just, since we were talking about it, I was wanting to lay it out on paper. Okay. After the meeting, if you just give me the location, give me a list, we'll make a list of the locations and give it to Mr. House. Um, the next item that we have is the downtown sidewalks. Of course, uh, we're going to have to reject all those bids. Um, I met with David Howell today, and he gave me a, an explanation for why some of the, some of the circumstances that led to the overbid of his estimate. And I'll try to uh, give you some of these reasons. Some of the reasons are that concrete prices have gone up approximately 20% recently. That led to an increase. Um, the steel tariff changes caused some uncertainty with regard, regards to material prices, so they allowed for some of that in their bid. Uh, traffic control requirements drove the contractor's pricing upward uh, with all the work that's going to be done like on Main Street and Union Street, uh, traffic control, flag men, things like that, uh, drove the price up. Um, having to use, because it's a project on a federal highway, having to use um, minority subcontractors, things like that, has caused, um, they have to use a minimum subcontractor. It's called a DBE and I can't remember now what he said the letter stood for. Um, the BE is a business enterprise but I can't think what the D stands for. It's not disadvantaged but anyway it's just minor it's a type of minority contract has to be utilized in a contractor has to be utilized in their work. Uh, some expected delays to funding source from funding sources. Uh, did they calculate the prevailing wage? When the original bid, did it conclude having to pay prevailing wage? They did. I'm not sure that uh, they used them. There's a couple of different prevailing wages, and I'm not sure they used the right one. Thing, the way it was explained to me. Um, the, the grant that we got to TAP grant was federal money, and that means we have to go by federal guidelines and regulations and requirements, and that's what really ran the project up a bunch. Um, I mean, they've, they've done a good job in the past, haven't missed the They've estimated what the job was. Bids came in slightly over that. It hadn't been that bad, but this one was a real shock. We've got the grant. Um, we're looking at rebidding the, the project for what the grant will cover. In other words, only doing part of what it is. Uh, Union Street coming from the lift station down there up to the consignment shop, not going, not doing the sidewalk around the consignment shop. But once you hit Mulberry Street, it'd be both sidewalks on both sides. And then it would skip over to, well, it would get the sidewalk from the service station on the corner down to uh, Riverside Market. I get, I'm dating myself. <laughs> <laughs> to Charlie. put in a sidewalk all the way down Charlie, that way. Charlie's Market. Yeah, Charlie's. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then it would be on Union Street from Apple Alley up to uh, McCreary Court. It was supposed to do both sides, but on the uh, Methodist Church side, that retaining wall there and the one up across uh, close to Apple Alley created a lot of extra work and so that that was left out. 
and then we'd do the two blocks of Main Street downtown with the uh, street lamps, the, the green areas that we're putting in sidewalk, those kind of things. And it would come come in right the estimates right around six hundred and fifty thousand for that. Which our part would be about one hundred fifteen thousand, and that's from the engineer's quote estimate. That's their estimate, and they yeah. missed it by as much as they did the last time. Uh, well, he, that was in, uh, in uh, conference with the low bidder. You know, they they came up with different areas, and they, this is what the approximate cost is for this area, this area, and this area, and so that was. Uh, Getting the most bang for our buck was that uh, I had looked at doing away with Union Street and trying to do more of Main Street, but the uh, condition of the sidewalks I think warrant the Union Street part more than the the rest of Main Street part. Actually, the sidewalk is used utilized quite a bit. So that's where we stand on that. Uh, Question is, you want to go ahead and pursue it, or what Main Street sidewalk? Are you talking about? Pardon? What Main Street sidewalk are you talking about? Going to Barbara's Market? It's a, it's the, it's just on the side, the in front of Likens, Capers, all the way up through King's Drugs, that area. It's two blocks there. Is what it's doing. On the part, the, road. the part in front of uh, on Tom Bennett side, the Lane side. Yeah. Yeah, but it's nothing around that corner. That corner right there alone cost uh, just the corner where the consignment shop is was over thirty-eight thousand dollars just for that one corner. It's not in bad shape of the lanes. No, but the sidewalk on that side of Main Street, especially in front of uh, Steve Gary's building, that's uh, that's in terrible shape. You know. There's as much difference in elevation as three or four inches there. There's been had black top pile. It's old. It's old. It's old barber shop. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you look at it, it's painted red, and it's it, it that much above the rest of the sidewalk. It's been repaired. <coughs> uh, it's got black top up next to it to try to remove the, you know, the sharp edge and. Uh, but it could be jackhammered out and slow. Hold up cheaper. Do what now? It could be jackhammered out and slow. Hold up cheaper with concrete. They hire the employees to do that instead of contracting that out. Would the, yeah. would the grant still cover it? Yeah, if we still have the grant. Our part would be a, the 115000 no, I'm saying if we did it some other way. Oh no, no, it, we have we have to do based on the money. I'm, that just, I'm just saying from from out there. That's the only place on that that I know that the sidewalk is bad. In front of Cliffs. On on that to the stoplight. Right. I'm not aware of any other place on there that's messed up until you get on the other side, going up the steps, going to the the water treatment plant from Tom Bennett's place mm -hmm. to the water treatment plant. Now on the other side is free going down through there in front of the, the dog haircut right. place. Yeah. yeah. In, in that side they're gonna put some lights. Kind yeah, of it was it was gonna lights. be uh, there was gonna be some street lights, uh, ornamental street lights put in, there was gonna be some um, areas I mean, it's work that we'd have to do. Uh, so that's not included in the lights? No, lights. we'd have to buy the lights and install them ourselves, but uh, the electricity would be there. Uh, there'd be a four foot wide paved brick section that would have all the utilities down through there that uh, would be part of that next to the curb. Uh, there's a, the original plans call for 
uh, 11 foot long areas, three and a half feet wide that uh, were. Uh, but let me ask you this question. Okay, go ahead. The, the port going down Union Street where the brick pavers are at, then can we cut out certain sections? Like for example, he's right. If we jackhammer that, that sidewalk up in front of Steve Gary's, which don't, and just pour black uh, concrete in there. I mean, there's other areas that may need it. I mean, because we, other than that, we have a fairly decent sidewalk. If we're going to try to make this six hundred some odd thousand dollars go as far as possible, we need to tackle the areas that are the worst. If it's going down the old bulk plant area, if it's going on down Union Street with the brick, have we finally got that resolved where the people are not? We had somebody complaining they were going to get rid of the brick pavers. Uh, which I don't understand because that's a trip hazard big time. That, that going down there from Tom Bennett's to there, there's, you probably, the only time you have traffic there is whenever you're going to have a, a break. Oh, you mean from from the consignment shop down? Yes. To the okay, area. that's part of the Trail Town plan of, of eventually to try to get a uh, walkway all the way down to the bolt ramp. Yeah, I, I haven't walked all the way down it in years, so I don't know how bad it is. But I do a lot of walking through everywhere, and the sidewalks are not in bad shape other than about 10 or 15 places, and you can jackhammer that out to get the root out or anything that's under it, and then black or concrete it out, mm -hmm. a four-foot section, and it's done. And that's maybe $1,000 per, per section, and... Ten different spots versus six hundred five. I think it could be spent somewhere else. Well, that work would just would just take out of the plan and do ourselves, and then add in another section of of uh, sidewalk that had been taken out, like down uh, down Walnut, going down to Clay Street. You know, where there is no sidewalk. <laughs> Yeah, I, I understand whether there's no sidewalk, but on one side of the road or other, for most places, there is a sidewalk. So, I mean, it's not going to be hard for people to walk. If they're going to walk anyway, that extra 50 yeah, foot across. You can get a bid spec. Oh, sidewalk. I'm we, don't about. we don't have to have a free one on both sides of the road. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I would be more for putting a liner in some of these sewer systems than with an extra 600000 or 500000 so we can't do that. I mean, yeah, you can't do that, that money we got, we got to spend it on sidewalks somewhere. Where I do agree is, is that we need to put, put sidewalks where it is most needed for sidewalks. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, we just need to take a look at the plans and try to determine what. Uh, area of the sidewalks we feel like uh, we want to include in our, in our building. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Mr. Drain here, our CPA, our accountant, uh, has our financial report, our audit report that we have every year, so he's ready to make a Report to us regarding that. Yeah. This, Thank uh, you for waiting. Yeah. <laughs> this uh, staple one is just the kind of special one for the county board, and the purpose of that is just to inform the council that you, that you have been audited and what the purpose of the audit is, that the one just agreements with management, the fact that some instruments are used in it. Uh, it's required because. All of our actual hands-on work is done here, and it's with the mayor and police staff. And in some cases, they decided that the uh, governing bodies weren't even aware of the fact that there was not at all. So that's the only purpose of that. But the actual audit report. This is June 3017. This was done in June. And we'll get hard before we make them down here the presentation. Uh, page one is the independent auditor's report, and then uh, this one spills over now to uh, three pages. Page one, page two, page three, page so the body out starts on page four. <coughs> Statement of imposition 
converts everything that you do to a business like basis square. If you borrow money, it's treated as a liability. If you repay, it's just a repayment. If you uh, buy a police car, it's an asset, it's depreciated. It's not treated as an expenditure at the time that the money uh, is spent. But under this presentation, total assets of the city were uh, 12 million seven thirty six eight eighty seven. Total liabilities were uh, just under six million, so the net position at the bottom was about seven point three million. You make a look at uh, these uh, interfund receivables, though. Over time, uh, there has been some borrowing back and forth from one side to another. And one of the reasons we'll get into uh, later on, on the water, which I'm glad to see that you've done uh, the, uh, the rate increases, but over the years, basically, the general fund, to a certain extent, has been funding the operation of water because it's due almost $600,000 at the end of the year that's built up over a long period of time where that's, that's money the general fund has, has supported uh, water sewer, mostly water over that time. Uh, big, uh, big things that had to be added to this starting about three years ago are these things like the deferred outflows and uh, the uh, net pension liability which uh, is required to be booked now. Essentially, when you net those out, the uh, deferred outflows, uh, 445000 and then the pension liability of a million eight, that's about $1.4 million that's been booked that essentially would be hard for a share of the unfunded county employees retirement system. It's not something that you have to pay now, but it, it goes back to all the discussions we went through the General Assembly this past time on how, how that eventually gets shorn up. Page 5 is the same presentation on a business-like basis. And it starts in the first column of expenses, which is the function of any government to provide services. Then over to the right is how those are paid for. Governmental had a million three sixty nine five ninety nine. And if you look at what it generates to be able to pay for that uh, under grants and charges for services, it's, it's practically non-existent. The, Governmental activities would have lost a million one had it not been for all these things at the bottom, which are um, taxes, uh, mostly mostly taxes, uh, disposition of excesses, and so forth. But the uh, governmental activities, mostly general fund in this presentation, pretty much broke even. Business activities, a change in net position was a loss of just under $243,000. Page six is the old traditional one. Under this, the governmental funds, all the books are things that are either cash or something that's easily converted to cash, and the only liabilities that are picked up are the ones that are paid within uh, the next uh, cycle. Uh, 2.1 million in total assets, 953,792 in liabilities. So the bottom line is about a million two, and then, then it shows the differences in it, how you in this case, you don't include the deferred outflows, you don't include uh, uh, capital assets, neither do you include the pension liability and uh, notes payable. So the net position actually goes from a million two up to about 2.2 million uh, under the business type basis. And then page seven is revenues and expenditures for the general fund and the non major funds. Million seven revenues. Million four in uh, expenditures, transfers in, transfers out. Net change in fund balance under this was a loss of twelve thousand three hundred eighty-one dollars, which is basically like break even anyway. And then the next page shows the difference in how you get that one forty-eight dollars loss. Of the page nine: Water, sewer, and sanitation only have one kind of basis for presentation because they are supposed to be self-sufficient. They're supposed to be supported by user charges anyway. But this does is pretty meaningful, I think, because it breaks down water, sewer, and sanitation. If you go to page 10, where it shows the revenues and expenses, you see that sewer and sanitation are pretty much self-sufficient. But water had a loss of $298,000 during the year in June 2017. Now, uh, we're suspension everything up to be able to do 18 years fairly quickly, but I would be surprised if it doesn't show fairly substantial loss in water again. 
page 11 just reverse everything to it. Like cash flow is actually money in, money out. And you see that, that cash actually uh, only had a loss of about $72,000 overall. So when you get to, cash, to actual cash, it's not that much different. But depreciation is being added. Uh, Counted into that, and we're not using kind of accelerated depreciation like you're talking about the wastewater trying to do to recover, but there's depreciation included in it because every single thing you have here wears out, whether it's a sewer line or water line or, or a pitch line. There's a difference in the number of years that the, the depreciation claimed on is going to what you consider to be the useful life. Several pages of notes. We'll see on page 22, I'm talking about the borrowing back and forth, looking at all that on five. General fund was owed a million four, but it owed 757, 977 to other funds. So you can go down through the list there and you can see uh, which funds have a net receivable and which ones have a net payable. And again, if you look down, when you net it all up, the uh, water fund owes some other fund over a million two. And that's how it's been able, basically, to float all those losses for, that, for all those years. Um, page 23 is the changes in fixed assets. Uh, governmental activities, this, this building, police, fire equipment. Uh, total assets, about 2.2 million at the end of the year. And then the business types, water, sewer, and sanitation, uh, 8.5 million. And then it shows how the depreciation is allocated on the uh, general government side, 188, on water, sewer, sanitation, 282,000. Page 24 is the, the uh, debt. And you know, what I think the discussion was earlier about borrow money to operate on, that one at the top, that's what I'm trying to note. Pretty much ever since I've been doing this audit, there's been money borrowed at some point in the year to work it over until time to start collecting taxes. And, this past year, you know, they started the year on 50,000, ended the year on 50,000. 50 new borrowed, 50 paid back. Except for that, if you go on down, there was no additional debt for anything else. Everything else was, was at least retiring the debt that was already there. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing we did. Uh, page 25 shows what it takes to retire, to retire the debt. And you can see uh, governmental 250,000 and business type. 373.4. If you look at all that, this city doesn't have a great deal of debt. If, if you just look at it purely like that, if you look at the size of it and the kind of assets it has, you really are on the low side of debt as far as the cities that we do many dollars on. But we have some, of course, they have maybe a, a water project or a sewer project, but they owe them millions of dollars. Uh, Page 25 is more of that. Uh, of course, there again, that's just on the government side. You know, of course, the city does owe about 2.2 million on, on water and sewer, which would take about 3.1 million to pay off eventually. Uh, a whole lot of pages when you start. On page 27, what it takes to do all the slow on the entire system. It goes 27 all the way through 30. All page thirty one dollars for that's the budget. bottom line, pretty much that's sixty seven thousand dollars short of budget overall, but the revenues were six hundred and ninety four thousand dollars short, but the expenditures were seven hundred and thirty five thousand to the good. But when you added some of those transfers out, it came out about sixty seven thousand dollars less than the Page 33 and 34 are more about 35 or more about 35 and 60. 36 and 37 are the small phone cemetery, WDA, and 36 just breaks down the small phone expenditures and the what they were for. Page 39 is the report on term control. We didn't have, uh, any material weaknesses in internal control. 
The only finding that we had at all was on page 41, and that's on bidding. And the only one we found there is that pairing was over $20,000, which normally by state law would have to be bid. It's my understanding that for all practical purposes, you only really have one contractor that you can get to do any paving here anyway. And the only thing you really need to do that's not just have when you award a contract, have some kind of mention in the minutes, give us a discussion. That's the only place that you have. And we, we've already made a motion yeah. to address that, yes. Any, any questions on Well, should we give up and go home? Or should we try to watch? <laughs> <laughs> the party's over? Or? Uh, there's a lot of information to digest there. Anybody have any questions of him? <laughs> yeah, I understand there was a million dollars lost on the water. Two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand. Two hundred the water is what's really sucking the life out of us. That's every year, correct? So every year the city is making up the loss in what they don't charge to the citizens in water rates. But like I was getting at earlier, over there on Liberty Street, I've lived there for 13 years. I know there's been a leak there for over three years. We've talked about and that it, a lot. And it never got, it got fixed here, what, two months ago? I mean, that's clean water filling 12 inch ditch up 24 hours a day, seven days a week, three years. And the reason why it hits so home for me is whenever I first moved here 14 years ago, I had a $67 a month water bill. And then once I've done all this, for the last 10 years, I've been paying 140 to 168 a month. Yeah, but majority you're, that, you're majority of that sewer bill, water. majority that it's sewer. Yeah, because the water bill is fine. I'm not complaining about water's the water not bad. Bill, <laughs> yeah, but but I'm still paying on my usage for the sewer. I'm paying a hundred dollars a month on my sewer, but I'm also paying for that clean water that is flowing down that ditch because that is still a cost, and that's what is driving my cost up at my house every time I flush the toilet. Yeah, but that's and, the sewer. And, and, and I, I understand that, but it, it all is that rippling effect. Right, but what we're talking about, that we're paying 200 I, extra thousand dollars. I know that, and I, under, I understand what I'm going to get at, though, is where that I can see that it coming out here, and I understand that, that water may be coming out up here. So, but couldn't you buy a machine for 15000 or less that will actually pinpoint that leak within 20 foot? We've, we've, we just, we've, we've just purchased a system yeah. that uh, the men in distribution have been just recently trained on. It took, uh, we actually purchased it probably about three months ago or something like that. And it came from Germany and it was forever getting over here. Mm -hmm. And they've been trained on it. And it's a system that will, we can put little recording cylinders on top of valves throughout our system and that information be downloaded into a reader that will convert it to a GPS on a screen or an iPad and show at the valves whether there's a leak between valves. You know, if it's a green valve, everything's good. If it's a green and a yellow, we've got a leak in that line closer to the yellow one. In fact, it's supposed to be able to tell us within a bucket width of where the, yep. where the leak is. And we've just gotten that. And it was about uh, 14000 dollars $14,000 that the council invested in trying to start to determine where leaks are. Because we've got a lot of leaks that are not like that ditch that are not coming to the surface. And uh, it may be making its way into a sewer line or some some other place that's coming out somewhere else that we don't see. And so we bought that system to try to start determining line leaks, you know. But um, it's going to take us a while, you know. Just it's going to be a continual thing. Uh, so, so you're going to place them 
now in every thing, every junction box or something? Well, we've we're got we've got eight cylinders. Whatever you find that you think that might we've be. got eight cylinders that we can take out and do an area. Okay. You know, what we do is like take them out at night when there's very little water usage, and get a better reading between the valves. Uh, but that way, a specific area we can find leaks in that area, and eventually, hopefully, we can get the whole city done, you know, over a period of time. But we have to work that in between other issues that distribution and sewer have to do, also, you know. So it's kind of a lax time they'll be able to do that, but otherwise, uh, we have to just wait till it's available. So our water is mainly our main drain. Financial. For mm -hmm. for all the departments that we've got, yes. It's for the one the, that doesn't support itself. Proprietary departments, it's, it's it's our downfall. Water's a drain on the on the city. Sewers a drain on the residents. We have hesitated this. to raise water rates, even though we knew we had to eventually because of the the regional sewage rates. I mean, because we know that whenever you get that that bill, it's. Like you said, $140. It's not the water plant, but most people just look at that bill and they say, my water bill is it's such busy. and such, and that's I, all they're saying. I just saying. know there's a lot of people that, that live in, there's a lot of people that live under $1,000 a month mm -hmm. that yeah. live in the city of Harper. We know, which is why we, we were hesitant to raise it. We didn't even raise it as much as we needed to. But I mean, we're not, even raising the rates, we're not even going to break even. We're not even, we're not even at even. You know. But you think about over a four year period, if you lost a quarter million dollars a year, there's a million dollars gone. Yeah. And he's right. We tried to raise rates. We tried to raise rates to get, I mean, it's one of the three proprietary accounts water, sewer, and trash. Okay. We tried to get water as close to break even as possible. The downside about it is it was going to make that vehicle, the sewer bill, and the water bill, and the trash bill look even worse. Mm -hmm. What we need as much as anything is, is how to figure out a way, as we were talking, what, 45 minutes an hour ago, with regional wastewater. Let me say something about our increase. About a million dollars over huh? a year. Is that not what it's working out to? How many years have we been in under them? Been um, that way forever. How, <laughs> how long have we had the regional wastewater plant? Since 2005. 13 years. Let me say something about the water rates. The rates that we've increased tonight, my bill is usually a minimum bill. It's just my wife and me. And we don't flush them over ever. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they only take showers once a month oh, to yeah. discuss this. No, I'm scared. <laughs> My, the minimum bill that I pay is $59.57. My bill is going to go to $63.76. It's $4.19 .04 increase per month. It's going to cost me about $50 a, a year increase in my water bill. Okay. That's the rate increase that we passed tonight for a minimum bill. It's not it's not exorbitant, but it's like he said, instead of losing two hundred and forty thousand dollars a year, we may down be down to only losing fifty thousand dollars a yeah, year. Yeah, I'm not complaining about raising that the water bills and you know, that five dollars more a month. I am just more curious, can we find something to eliminate the two hundred and fifty thousand dollars? Of losing it, where the, we see this water leak, maybe we can start trying to do something instead of letting it go on for months and months and months. Yeah. That we try to get it fixed within a month. I think yeah. once we once we start using this detection system, yeah, I, I didn't know that you purchased it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, we're just we just got it. I mean, this this is something we purchased. Uh, we've had two demonstrated to us. We picked one. Um, and we ordered it, and it was slow about getting here. It we voted on that, what? I mean. Oh, man, several months ago, wasn't it? They what? shifted April? on a slow boat from China. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we're trying to find Yeah, well, it must have been made in China, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was really, probably German-made, so we're good. I mean, when I first joined the council, we have made leaps and bounds just by the things that we have done. You know, helping right. helping the water bill come down. I mean, it's just a combination of different factors in providing clean water. Like our 
our big water tank is, is really, really hurts us. Uh, we have to do a lot of flushing out of it because we don't use a million gallons a day. You know, we don't use the water that's in that. But getting to economic development, we if we ever... We mainly still use our small ones, don't we? Pardon? We mainly still use our small ones. We, we need a, a smaller tank that's elevated. We, need you know, we don't need the million. Huh? Nothing. We, need, we don't need the million gallon tank right. so much. We, what we need is a smaller tank that's elevated so we can still get our pressure out to our farthest points but we can turn that water over in a day's time and keep fresh water in there instead of having to put fresh water with our stale water and keep it mixed to keep our chlorine up. So we're, we're starting to explore other avenues of ways of trying to come up with that kind of a solution. A smaller, not using the whole million gallon tank, but trying to still end up with the same pressure for our outer reaches. What we need is more people in this city using water and more businesses in this city using water. If we had those two things, our tank that we have would be sufficient and we could make money and make our, our water. All right. We're getting away from our... You could always grow up. We're getting away from our otter report. And the thing about it, once we're just, they just vote to raise their water rate 32%. Not just us. So we need a motion to accept this hot report. I so move. Okay. I'll so thank you. All right. All those in favor of accepting this report. Thank you. Hey, thank, thank you, you. sorry. So much. Appreciate it. So long. Yeah. <laughs> um, Keep your mouth for a little bit. Yeah. We heard a presentation tonight about Marcy's Law. Um, I would ask for discussion and possibly a vote on a proclamation to support Marcy's Law, whether you're in favor of that or not. Victims need rights. Mm -hmm. I make a motion that we support Marcy's Law. Victim needs rights. I second. Mm -hmm. Is discussion city? regarding that motion? No. All in favor? Thank you. We'll issue a proclamation that we are in favor and support. Um, I have another issue under informational. Uh, Leroy's already alluded to it, the fact that we've lost a, uh, we're down a policeman. We have advertised for uh, certified policemen to fill that position. Uh, we've asked around, they've asked around with uh, seeking out people that they thought might be interested in working and they've not had success, we've not had anybody contact us. Our only other avenue now is to advertise for a recruit, which means that we would uh, we would hire them. You want to tell about what all you have to go through? Uh, in the ad you could say preferably certified, but not not a requirement. I mean, so you're looking at entry level an paper or someplace because there are no certified officers around here that won't work for City Harbor. Okay. Um, they all got jobs, all departments. You know, we don't pay, we're, you know, Beaver Dam's lowest paid officer makes more than two of our guys that, you know, so we're not going to get none of them. Um, but if you put that in the orange pro paper, it might help. Uh, what are we talking about? We're talking about entry level people? Yeah, we're going to have to probably send them to the Send them, send them, to, send them to, yeah, yeah, uh, right. Eastern or what? what's it? You know, with all the questions and like, like George was talking about rumors and the Harper Police Department, I don't know what to tell my guys. Uh, I know there's been talks of, I know Tony brought up now a meeting, a famous meeting or whatever, about just being in the police department. Meeting. Yeah, but that's that's. Yeah, I know it's not going to happen. And like I told the mayor, we're already, not not in our lifetime. We're already one police department. Uh, we have a good relationship with everybody. They have a good relationship with us. Uh, Hartford pays theirs. Sheriff County pays their due. Beaver Dam pays their due. Um, all we can do now at this point is put an ad in the paper. Because 
as far as I know, I know we couldn't fill the sixth position, but we are going to keep five. Is that is that the plan? Very definitely. Yeah. Is the paper the best way to advertise? We couldn't really. If we hire somebody, what's going to happen if, if he's not been to the academy? It takes almost a year. I know. Okay. And that's why I'm saying I think we need to look at apprenticeship for that. Oh, you mean through job court? Or something? Well, I mean, it could be, but not ours because we don't have a safety and security trade. But anyway, I'm just saying anybody who they think would be a viable candidate, I think, why not explore the option? You want to get somebody entry level if you just hire them off the street and you expect that they're going to train them and then they're going to stay in Hartford, they're like not, he said? They're not going to train them if you don't go to the well, I have, understand that they go to the academy. They still have to trained, hang there on is just a, a second. KRS now that we, when they sign that three-year contract, if we send them to the academy, they have to give us at least three years. The gentleman that was initially interested in a job at Beaverdown, he's still under contract. We could buy his contract out, but I mean, that's not a possibility because he's no longer in, interested. Uh, and the only thing we can do, like I said, it takes a year. We usually start them out at whatever. We're not going to get certified. Uh, what can they do until they get certified? Can they act no, as they can't do anything by themselves. What you have with an apprenticeship that's different is the progressive wage, and it doesn't matter whether or not they train in an academy, they're still going to get on the job training, just like any other job. It's right, but it's not going to relieve the four officers that are there. I've got one officer now that... But you're going to do that anyway, right? I mean, you're going to hire somebody probably that's not... So you're not going to get somebody that's already trained and certified, right? right? so probably for the next year or so... That's what I'm saying. We're going to be working with four certified officers. Uh, I don't know what you mean by apprenticeship. Well, they know what I mean, but... Explain, explain the process that uh, if we hired okay, somebody that's all, not certified, explain we, the process. We can't get them on academy day until we actually hire them. Right. right? If they come in, we say, okay, we pick you. Then there's what's called pop strain. they got to go take all these tests, the polygraph test, the uh, psychological. It's like a five or six step thing, and that takes time. We have to send them to Richmond. They have to go do that. Right. If once they get through all that, then we can make them a job offer. Once we make them a job offer, they come in and they work 40 hours a week. Then, at that point, we can get an academy day. From what I understand right now, it's about a three to six month waiting period. During that three to six months, they will come in and work 40, you know, 40 hours a week, but they'll have to be with another officer. I know. And again, there's money available to help pay for that academy. If you go through apprenticeship? We don't have to pay for the academy. The state does. All we do is pay okay. that, that person's salary for 40 hours a week. Okay. How long is the academy? 22 weeks in the academy. Then when they come out, you'll be on what's called, you'll have a field training officer for three to six months, depending on the person. Okay. There's also money available yeah, for, like, for the system. city to support Wages that apprentice. Well, There's all kinds of things that come along Maybe. with that. We've never done anything like that. I mean, we, we, we've got this uh, survey that we get every you know, We've year. talked about that before. That's a subject I, want, I would like for us to at least think about. Do a market analysis on what we're currently paying our officers. Because I can remember in years past, we would hire you, send you to training, come back, and then you go to work for somewhere else. And that's silly because it right. costs money to tra hire and train that's people. That's why we're not going to get certified. If we could offer uh, the... Be a competitive wage. Right. But <laughs> really, we've got to kind of do better than this regional in order to get them to leave the job in the first place. I understand. So come here but we sure can't do it for less. Right. No. no. I mean, we ran across that with, with water plant operators. And, and like I said, historically, we hired you, paid you, sent you training. You're back two months, and you, <laughs> you go across town. Right. And that's always tanner. a possibility because like the Owensboro OPD, uh, they're hiring on them, and they got a $5,000 sign-off on them. So, you know, we're not going to be able to compete with that. Uh, so it looks like we're going to have to hire. Not if we're not open to new ideas, we're not. I'm going to tell you right now, we're not. I don't not. know how, what do you mean new ideas? I mean, if, if we're going to sit and have these discussions, and the discussion is going to be, well, we're not going to do that and we can't do that, then we're never going to get there. Yes, I think we need to pay competitive wages. I think we need to be looking at other options, especially if you're hiring entry-level people. And I'm not saying that it has to be an apprenticeship. I'm just saying 
I don't think that that discussion should be shut down automatically. I think it needs to be looked at because it definitely helps with your retention. It definitely helps getting funds for us. And I'm not just saying to pay for the academy. There is money available that is for the employers of any apprentice through the state. Additional funds that are available. It builds loyalty for, for the new employees. There's all kinds of ways to go about it. And I think whenever we have entry-level positions, especially in the position that we're in right now, with the, the pay that they get right now, it would be really not smart to look at all the options that are available. So do I know for sure that it's a good option? No, I don't. But I, I think it, it would be a very sad position for us to just strike it down and say, no, we're not going to look at that. We need to go this way. You see how long the pressure program will be? It's a year-long program. Like, like, like he said, it's going to take six months to get it. Officer. It's a bail burn low, so it wouldn't yeah. be no different. Six months and You're saying the around. timeline would be different, but there's a big difference in somebody being a state registered apprentice and just being an employee. But after he got out of the apprenticeship, would you go and turn loose on his own? No. Would you still have to watch him? Wait a second. Uh, of course, it's the same thing. They're still got to go through the academy. Right. It's still got to go through all of the same things that, yeah. Well, I just didn't know if he was just waiting after he got out of the apprenticeship program. The apprenticeship program would be with you guys. Oh, I, they're I, still going to be with you later. guys. They're still going to be going through the. They're still going to be with you all for six months, and they're going to go through the academy all the same. I didn't know if he was in the pressure program. Yes, and we, they will send you. They will. There is funds only, available. When I talked to Steve, he said it's the only changed, money. It's changed, George. Okay, that's fine. I didn't understand. Yeah, yeah. it has changed. There yeah, is money well, available. We all that. That, if, if somebody's going to pay. For somebody while they won't pay the salary. They, there is money available to the employers um, as part of that, and I think that we would be dumb not to look at and, any and the options. It really, you need to open it up for the veterans now. I think the state of Kentucky, if we can find someone that's, that's uh, been trained as a military police officer, that 22 week is shut down for two weeks. It's You've got somebody time. right down the road here who just retired from the military as an MP. He's, he's driving a truck, CDL truck. His Who name is Sean Lynn, and he was CID. Well, so he would qualify for that. But is he going to come to work for the city of Hartford starting out? Not if we don't pay competitive wages. He can't. That's why I think we've got, we've got to do a market analysis. I mean, we, we've said that before. We hire you, we train you, and we lose you. Know, you. Right now, everybody's looking for cops because nobody wants to be a cop now. All the media, all that, whatever. But... If you put him in the he didn't apply. He's a military. We know. You give me his name, number, I'll call him. I'll hunt him down. I can give you his name and number. I can't give it to you right this second, but I can't give it to you. But I mean, he's working and he's probably making good money. So. Right, so he probably doesn't want to be a. I don't know. All right. Um, before we leave that subject, I mean, I. I I'd like to at least for us to start looking at market analysis. We get that survey, you know, every year from the state that tells us what. Mm. How outdated is it by the time we get it? He's telling us, and we all know. I mean, you know, turn TV on and they're bashing cops everywhere. I mean, I mean, I, this, and that survey could be a year or two years old by the time we get it. I mean, is it not? I don't know. Is it pretty current? I mean, we we submit our information to them, and then a month or two later, we get we get it back. You know. And all the participating cities. Yeah, the yeah. whole conversation yeah. about. All around, man. I can tell you what, you know, I mean, the sheriff's deputy right out of the training is making uh, 1705, 1710, I think. Uh, right out of training, Hartford. My lowest paid right now is making 1605. And he's been out of the academy for now for about three years, I think. Their lowest paid in Beaver Dam is making sixteen fifty, and he's been out of the academy for about 11 months. And so Central City, uh, you can go down there and, and get a job easily making 18-something uh, an hour. You know, all these police jobs, you can just look around, it's all open to public records, but you can kind of I think we need to look at our surround. That's who we're competing against. Well, and the whole point of us looking at restructuring our personnel was to talk about 
our city employee wages and how we can save money in areas and then raise the, the wages for the employees who we do need and who are doing a good job and who are filling positions that we have to have. So all part that's, of plan. that's part of the plan. Yeah, that's what we're doing. And I think immediately we need to look and see, I mean, if we've got, if we're having a hard time finding officers and you're saying there is no officers to be found, other, other people are looking for officers too, right? Yeah. We haven't advertised that. So, job, so, right? so bottom line is this, we I think we need to look at least Central, Central City, Beaver Dam, Orangeboro, Bowling Green, right. so Hardsburg, the least the ones that are close to us yes. to find out if we're under market scale, we need to be at least competitive with those. That's a start. I don't think we can pay what Global and Lexington are paying, but... No. Yeah. And we don't expect that. I don't, that, as the Chief of Hartford, I don't think that our officers should make what, you know, if we get close to what the Sheriff's Department is, that's fine. Because as, as Hartford, we are the least tasked, right? A lot of our stuff is backup for Sheriff's Department. Or, but we should be close. Because now, since hard, uh, police officers are hard to come by, you got to have something that makes them want to work, or we're going to slowly fizzle away. Um, and uh, we don't really have anything that any of the other adjacent departments have. We don't have that. We don't have as much as they got, so we're probably not going to. Well, you're down to five positions. We've got the same problem with yeah, water. They, like and I realize so that. that I realize that's why I mentioned have, that. That's one of the reasons why you don't have that position anymore, is because that is what we're looking at. Can you sure your wages are competitive. Can you, by the next meeting? Right, but y'all, you know, the, yeah, I'm going to come to No, no, my question is, by the next meeting, can you work with the mayor to have maybe five or six municipalities yeah. in this area so we know what we're talking about? Yeah, we're going around. With the tenure that you mentioned, like, the ride of the canopy, somebody's they've been here three. Somebody's got five years experience, somebody's got right. ten, whatever. The, the thing with eliminating six positions, okay, we started aggressive going after the drug dealers here in the city of Hartford, going after the drug users. Brent Lindsay, and I put him with, he went and worked with their nonprofits guy over here at the sheriff's office. And in a span, I don't know, two, three years, three years, we amassed, uh, you know, I know at one time it was $11,000. The only thing with that drug fund, we can only buy stuff that's look for more drugs. Right. When you eliminate that six position, it, we can't do that no more. So we're not going to be able to be as aggressive going after we'll have to let the, get the sheriff's department to help us. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, and I know in that last meeting they said something about midnight shifts and uh, Hartford used to be the only one that had one out. I've met, that hasn't been in two decades. Beaver Down and Hartford's always had a mutual aid agreement to have at least one out 24 7. Everything they get, we go back them up. Because you don't send officers by themselves anywhere right. anymore. Those days are gone. Right? Sheriff's Department now has been putting one out in the county. He needs to put two. But, like I told George, basically, if when there's three out, say at two o'clock in the morning, because there's no state police out, they don't work 24 7 here. After about one, two o'clock, they go in. So you got a deputy, you got a Hartford officer, you got a Beaver Dam officer. If something goes on, say, like today up there on the up north in the north part of the county, the Hartford officer will go back that deputy up on that call. Beaver Dam officer will cover Beaver Dam and Hartford. If it happens on the south side of the county, Beaver Dam goes back to the sheriff's department up. Hartford covered Beaver Dam and Hartford. That's the way it's always worked. Uh, so eliminating a shift, uh, like we were talking, we were talking about. I just, yeah, I just threw that out. Just yeah, it was it. something tossed around. I don't think it was anything that we even. I didn't even yeah. remember we had that discussion. Yeah, I don't think it's Yeah, no. So if something happens in Fordsville, two o'clock in the morning. What happened? Well, if one deputy out, the Hartford unit will go with the Fordsville. So you will give me back up. And a lot of times, the Hartford unit will get to Fordsville before the deputy because he might be. He may be down in Saratown. Right. And it all depends on the call. If it's a 911 life or death, Hartford probably won't be in there uh, if he's on the south side of the county. And at that time, depending on what the call, they all three might go. So Fordsville uh, doesn't have anyone? 
McDonald Sheriff's Department covers that. Center County has one officer, he's a local officer, he works at the local airport, but he only works, I don't know, two days a week or something like that. Uh, I don't know what the deal is. I don't even know why they have a cop down there. The Sheriff's Department takes most of their calls. I don't know why. Four wheelers. Third part. <laughs> yeah, <they're not> <laughs> <they're not> <laughs> I shouldn't have said that because I'm sure he does do stuff. I'm just I'm At making fun of my, my hometown where I where So I there's nobody on the parkway after one o'clock in the morning. No, unless Harvard goes out there. Now Beaver Dam's got a little section of the seven K. Right? We got the, the mile the, section of the Nature. 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 Right. Um it needs more. You're right, it does. But the Sheriff's Department can't afford to hire more, apparently. Beaver Dam, they're looking to get a seventh officer. And like you said, they don't have six because of the alcohol tax. They've had six for 20 years. Hartford's had six for almost 20 years. Both, when did both that departments position had seven at one time. Mm -hmm. When was that six position eliminated? It was crazy. Do y'all get a kickback from since all the school stuff now? For well, the this is what I got. I got one officer that goes up to Wayland at seven. He, uh, at seven in the morning, stays late. He puts that down as an hour overtime every day. School board it reimburses the city for that hour. While I'm working at from two thirty to three thirty, I either get out and go walk through. I don't stay up there. But I do like a 20 minute walk through or whatever, or then I'll go down and set and run radar down here for the flashing lights are and, and all that. And, but that's my regular time. So y'all don't get a kickback reimbursement for that? I don't know about kickback, but yeah, see, Brent. I don't get anything. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> I mean, we get, get reimbursed. We get reimbursed. Yeah. Uh, the school board will reimburse. What the city pays Brent for five hours over time. Right. Just one hour. Because the two did he hire. He heard us bad when he took Josh, I'm telling you. Yeah. That was, he heard us bad. Yeah. And uh, we won't go there, but yeah. Uh, I can't, it's not Josh's fault. Josh, it, it worked out good for him. Mm -hmm. uh, well, better hours too, wasn't it? Well, better yeah, hours, better pay. Better pay. Better pay. Yeah. Better pay. And with all the, you know, I was trying to get to all the uncertainty with the uh, employees, you know, and all the rumors about this and about that and this, that, and the other. Y'all should require every employee to come to the meeting. <laughs> we can't make them come. We can't make you come. <laughs> well, we, they won't so over time, to come. And then they were told that I, I they didn't just need told to come. Them. I told them they didn't have to come if they didn't want to, you know, because... Oh, so then that was interpreted as don't come, I guess. Right, because I think maybe uh, the meetings used to be at 4 o'clock, so sometimes if I couldn't take... What I would do, I'd come to the meeting and stay till 5.30, because y'all changed the meetings from about an hour to three hours now. <laughs> not my choice. I don't know. Y'all know why I'm talking yourself. <laughs> not my choice. You know, I think I put it on my time card. So I took it as, well, we're not going to pay you to come there. But what I used to do, if I put it on my time card, I might have two out, or I used to have two out. Like on a Friday, I'd go home an hour early. So wait a second. Are you hourly? Mm-hmm. And the, the salary Everybody. we wouldn't do. Okay. Because that means whoever's on salary would work all the whole time. Yeah, you, you get screwed when you work out. Yeah. Believe they me. Believe me. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anybody have anything else? Believe I have. Uh, Good time. I best uh, Nathan give me a, a report about his activities in July and August. Uh, he issued citations to two different properties. He issued <coughs> warnings to six different properties. Spoke with several members of the community regarding concerns with properties on Fredica and Mulberry. He spoke with a property owner regarding issues with their property on Hunter Drive. And he's currently working with two properties about making corrections. So that's that's his report. Now, does anybody else have anything? Yeah. 
that you want to bring up. If not, move we adjourn. Thank you. Second, Second. motion. All in favor? <laughs> let, 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 thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let her be, she don't get the second them very often. <laughs>